Thank you very much, Brent. And an outside look at the Superdome. And I can tell you for sure it's going to be rocking with some 70,000 New Orleans Saints fans. They have the division in hand, the first ever here for the New Orleans Saints with a fine 11-5 season, a comeback season, if you will, to go against the wild card Atlanta Falcons at 10-6. And, six. and uh, both these teams, however, Al, are on a bit of a roll. I think about this uh, division, Frank, the NFC West for years dominated by two teams, the San Francisco 49ers and secondarily the Los Angeles Rams. This, of course, has been one of the, I don't want to say great rivalries, Dan. It's been a good rivalry through the years. They've met a lot but clearly the first time under these circumstances, but the whole NFC West now goes upside down with New Orleans and Atlanta in, L.A., San Francisco out. Well, the one thing you can say about it, Al, and I think it, uh, when you look at this rivalry, it was so important to the two teams. I mean, maybe it wasn't as important to the rest of the league, but it was so important to these two ball clubs because they were just about all they had. They both came in the league about the same time, 66 and 67, and if they could count on the possibility of winning a game, it was uh, against each other. The one thing I have to say about today's game, uh, we saw a 10-6 game there in Kansas City between the Chiefs and the Raiders. I don't look for that here today. I, I'll be very surprised if today's game isn't extremely exciting. A lot of big plays. We have a lot of contrasts today. One of them in terms of the two head coaches. You have Jerry Glanville on one side, who is the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, a longtime assistant coach. Jim Mora, who is 56 years old, in his fifth season as the head coach of the Saints on the left. And the two yesterday shared some thoughts with us. I've been a head coach six years, and now I'm sixth in seniority tied with Mora. I've been a head coach. So, I mean, we, uh, and that's why I take time and have some fun. That's why you don't take yourself too seriously because nobody else is. Uh, I think the worst thing that happens to you is you think, boy, this is it. I made it, and here I am, and don't have fun along the way. You know, I hope that I'm able to coach for a long time. I, I still am enthusiastic about, about coaching. I don't feel old, and uh, as long as, uh, you know, I can, I can be in a situation that I'm comfortable with, which I, I'm, I am here in New Orleans, I, I want to coach for a long time. Uh, anytime I, I, I've had a chance to meet with him, I think he's a, you know, a gentleman. He does a, a, you look at the film. You look at the film. The film is your resume. And uh, they play like, uh, and I told the team this, the first time we came in there, sure, the 49ers got talent, the Rams got all those players. But the team that plays like us is the Saints. They get after you, they hustle, they hit, they do it as a team. They're not star-oriented, and they play like we want to play. I like him. I mean, I, I don't know Jerry very, Jerry very well from a, a social standpoint, but I, I his teams, I, I respect the way his teams play, and I think he's a, he does a great job getting his guys ready to play every week, and they're always well-prepared, and, and he's, he's won a lot of games as a coach. We played real good football last year but did not get it done at the end, did not get the last shot to go in the hoop. And that's us. We're, we're the NBA of the National Football League. Our last shot's got to go in. If it goes in, you're mad, but we go home the winner. And if the ball gets kicked out or it doesn't go in, then, uh, you know, we don't, we don't look so good. But we play for the last shot. That's us. You know, I don't, I don't know a, a phrase or a catchphrase to characterize them, but they're a team that's just, I felt like, has, have played consistently close to its potential over the 16-game season. We've basically been in every game that that we've lost, and uh, they've just hung tough. My background would be, uh, you know, 50% of them usually like me, and 50% can't stand you, and that sort of follows with the fans in the cities, and, the, you know, my, my old rule is uh, if you're hanging 50-50, you, you, you're better than most folks. I probably tend to keep a little bit of a distance from my players. I just have always, that's always been my philosophy, and I, I hope these guys respect me, and I, I don't think they all like me, but I hope most of them do. You know, I would, I would like them to, but if they don't, they don't, you know. I, 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 but I'm not a guy that's going to spend a lot of time socially with the players or um, get too close to the players, and I think that's just the way I am. Two very different coaches. And joining us today on the sidelines, Tim Brand, our colleague, is standing by. Let's go down to him now, Tim. Frank, I had an opportunity to visit with both coaches, and as you heard, Jerry Glamble, he is unique. There is no question about it. He was telling me he has caused so much distraction for his team during the regular season that when you get to the distractions of the playoffs, his club is ready and very loose. And loose they are. As a matter of fact, Tim McKayer came out to loosen up, and he was wearing his Super Bowl championship rings from the 49ers. On the other hand, of course, you've got uh, Jim Moore, and Jim Moore is very serious. His main concerns right now, I think, is the health of his ball club. Everybody knows the story of Bobby Hebert, played about six games with that separated shoulder, and then he sat out 
Walsh took over. He's back now. He's playing well. Looked very crisp here in warm-ups, but they are still very concerned about that shoulder. On the other hand, Eric Martin was kicked in practice on Thursday. He has a welt. Still tender, still soreness, but he, too, had a good workout. I think they're most concerned with Reginald Jones, the cornerback. He is coming back, had sat out a couple of games because of his injured shoulder. They need him badly, especially the way that Atlanta spreads that attack. They go with the four wides, and they're going to test all of those defensive backs here this afternoon. So there's the report from both coaches, and a little bit of a surprise from the Atlanta as the distractions and everything else that Jerry Glanville causes. He's bringing in MC Hammer. They're waiting his arrival now to surprise the team. He's going to lead them in the pregame prayer and also with a little bit of rap. Guys? All right, Tim, you better leave that MC off, however. A lot of characters performing here. One of them, of course, prime time. The prime time one, Deion Sanders. A great football player, controversial, and we'll be taking a very close look at the young cornerback when we come back in just a moment. It wakes up sleepy purples and helps canary yellows to fly. It gives the blues a wonderful bump and even helps the roses to look rosier. It's Fuji color and it's the reason why more people are looking into Fuji films every day. Fuji, a new way of seeing things. biggest competitor is working on a proposal for the same job you're after. You want this to be enlarged? They have about the same idea as you do. Copy this slide. The only difference is... Let's print it. They own a Canon color laser copier, and you don't. Who would you give the job to? If you think you can't afford a Canon color laser copier, maybe you can't afford to be without one. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. -OK New Year's Day, the best is here. It all begins with the 103rd Tournament of Roses Parade. Then our Bull Fest triple header kicks off as ACC champ Clemson meets California in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Followed by the matchup you've been waiting for in the granddaddy of them all. The undefeated Washington Huskies make their claim for the national title as they tackle Big Ten champ Michigan in the Rose Bowl. And that night, number three, Florida takes on Notre Dame in the U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl. New Year's Day's biggest games are on ABC Sports. Thank you, Frank. I'm with Todd Marinovich, and Todd, this is the kind of game, a lot of dreams, a lot of hopes in, in, uh, in terms of what you wanted to do. Tell me what was happening in your mind in that first half. Well, there was a lot going on, and uh, uh, we were just sticking to our basic game plan. They came out and ran a little different stuff with Cherry coming down, Rob and our receivers, and he did an excellent job. And I just, you know, wish uh, I could have performed a little bit better for our guys, and uh, that's the way things go. And, this is a big-time game, and I'll never forget it. Uh, the game plan, was it modified for you, Todd? Pulled back a bit so you wouldn't have too much to think about out there? Not really. We did more this week than last week, and uh, and they didn't really do change much either on defense. It was just a hard-fought game, and, uh, you know, at the end there, I didn't want to I didn't want to take this uniform off. I'm playing with some legends, and uh, I didn't want the season to end. And a lot of people start thinking about uh, Kenny Stable, at number 12, the sleeves torn out there. What was the difference in the second half? What did you change? I just started uh, seeing things more. But, I mean, I just I, I had to wake up and see Cherry. He was coming in there making plays, so I just spotted him and just started, you know, just playing catch, throwing it to the open receiver. Yeah. There were a lot of people wondering whether Todd Marinovich could play NFL football after a short college career. You feel like you've answered them in a short period of time? Uh, I hope so, but if not yet, they they got they got a lot to see yet. They don't know what's coming. I think people certainly believe you are the future. Sorry about the loss, but we know we're going to see some great games for you later on. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, Frank. Hi, right, thank you, Lynn. Pretty gracious quarterback. You throw four interceptions. It's kind of hard to get him on camera today. Todd Marinovich, and of course he does have a future. Uh, the future is now for a youngster we saw three years ago, guys. Deion Sanders, remember? Here in the Sugar Bowl, Florida State going against Auburn. Uh, we had some questions about him at the time, Dan. And you remember we voiced him too, Al. Oh, sure. I, you know, the one thing about Deion Sanders, he must be a good luck charm, among other things, because the Braves went from last to first. The Falcons <laughs> have gone from last to first. Wherever he goes, his team wins. And, of course, he loves that nickname, and he loves the limelight. And he's one of these guys 
that I think likes to put a lot of pressure on himself. Well, and that's because when you're that type of football player or baseball player, you can respond to that kind of pressure. And, you know, it's really kind of uncool now to call somebody a great athlete. Well, Deion Sanders isn't just a great athlete. He's a remarkable athlete. But he is so much more. And as we're going to find out here in this little piece, primetime Sanders is too legit to quit. When Deion Sanders entered the NFL three years ago, many thought he was all style and no substance. A two-sport athlete like Bo Jackson accepted football was Deion's first love, and what he actually seemed to be best at was getting attention. Along the way, however, many have changed their minds about Deion Sanders, especially his peers. This year, he was elected to the Pro Bowl. You know, it just enhanced that this guy is not out there just, you know, just a hot dog having a good time. He's a player. He is too legit to quit. He's too legit, as Hammer would say it. Too legit to quit. Got it? kids hang on you every word so you really have to be careful and I know I'm touching a lot of people when I like to sound like I'm, I'm happy I'm happy with my job you know some people get up in the morning and go to work and say damn I get up and say all right let's go let's go do it but Dion is an upbeat about everything it's very difficult for him to talk about his father whom he hasn't lived with since he was a little boy he's you know been dealing with drugs for a while now and, you know, it hurts me inside because I think, you know, he's getting old enough where he's too old for that, you know. It should have been stopped by now. I want to do things for him, but I'm scared to because I've tried, and I've tried many times. It is Dion's mother, whom he calls his friend, who has been his support. We grew up together. We learned a lot of things together. And um, I owe my whole life and career to her because I can remember sitting home one day and she said, baby, you want to play some football? I said, yeah, I give it a shot. And yeah, the rest is a Cinderella story. Uh, Falcons are a colorful team. They have some colorful followers. This is Hammer and Tim Brass with him. All right, Frank, they hope that Cinderella story continues today. Grammy Award winning Hammer is with me. They have just adopted Too Legit to Quit. How did that come about? How, who was it with the Falcons that initiated that and got that off of your album? Well, you know, uh, Deion Sanders and uh, Andre Risen and Jerry Glanville are all uh, in the video. And uh, after the video, they just kind of adopted the song. You were in the locker room. What is the mood in there right now? Oh, it's the same as usual. They all fired up and ready to go. Too Legit to Quit. Hey, good seeing you, Hammer. All right, get your ticket at the door. <laughs> Back up to you, Frank. <laughs> okay, what a colorful group, the Atlanta Falcons. Right now, it's time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. Sports and Science Converge, brought to you by AT&T, sponsor of the 92 U.S. Olympic team. The dynamics of a baseball swing make it very difficult to study. A batter has four-tenths of a second to make his decision, and the swing itself takes only two-tenths of a second. Now, a student research team at Grove City College has made it easy to study the swing. Their diagnostic bat was awarded first place in the U.S. Olympic Committee's Olympic Sports Equipment Design Contest. Batters have a signature, just like we all sign our name a little differently. Batters uh, interacted with, with the ball quite differently depending on their, the, the quality of their uh, uh, batting average. Uh, we also found that uh, the bat vibration was very important. Strain gauges attached to the bat measure voltage changes that reflect bat vibration. Less vibration indicates a better swing. The researchers tested Sid Bream and other major league players, as well as their college baseball team. The data show hand movement, swing time, and quality of contact. By visualizing any hitting flaws, players become more receptive to improving their swing. Brought to you by AT&T, proud sponsor of the 92 U.S. Olympic team. My sister was three years older than me. Race you to the raft. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't quite beat her to the raft. 
Until that one day. I won, I won! I don't know if she let me win, but I'll never forget it. At at and we know every great athlete has been inspired by someone. As a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, we salute them all. Maybe I would have made it without my sister, but I doubt it. Those figures for the meeting? You don't like them? Okay. Some things are so reliable, they seem invisible. Confusing, right? They're fine. For the last nine years, Canon has been the number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. No, really, tell me. You can tell me. They're fine. I'm your friend. Tell me. And if you haven't noticed, that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. From compact to advanced digital color to high-speed copying systems, the choice is Canon. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. Back at the Superdome, our Canon NFL wild card playoff report continues as we await the kickoff, Atlanta and New Orleans. Two fine quarterbacks performing here today. Chris Miller, of course, with the Atlanta Falcons. Strong arm, Pro Bowl quarterback. Many expect a great future for this youngster, and he is still young, even though he's been starting for three years. But the real poignant story surrounds Bobby Hebert, the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. He was out during their four-game losing streak. He missed all of last year. It's a fascinating story, and it most certainly is a different time right now for Bobby than it was a year ago. A year ago, things were so very different for Saints quarterback Bobby Bear, the kid they call the Cajun Cannon. There was no NFC West Division title. There was no applause for Bear. There was only trauma and pain. Professionally, he set out the entire 1990 season due to a contract dispute, a move that did not sit well with a lot of people in New Orleans. Missing football, missing the competition, that was, you know, probably the hardest, but I believe as an individual, you know, you have to stand up for what you believe, and, you know, I had enough hobbies and enough outside interests to keep me busy. It was, you know, pretty much hard, I guess, around Sunday. But other than that, I just, you know, spent a lot of quality time with my wife and kids. The children were nestled all snug in their beds. But Bobby's professional problems paled next to his personal situation. Around this time, a week before Christmas, my mom's mom had died, and then um, we found out the next day my dad had colon cancer, and... Um, you know, and then four days later, um, you know, my sister died. And so it, it was really sad because um, it was so sudden. You know, uh, suicide is really, um, you know, a frustrating thing for a lot of families. Uh, it was just a nightmare. It was just something that, you know, you think you might wake up with or you see in a movie. And um, then you say, like, wow, this is really happening, you know, to me and stuff. Well, the nightmare is over now. In the past 12 months, A. Bear and the Saints have come to contract terms, and the city of New Orleans has reclaimed its native son, albeit somewhat slowly. In the preseason, there were boos and even a sign demanding a public apology from A. Bear. But oh, what a difference winning makes. He's gone from uh, heel to hero in this town, you know, after uh, he didn't play with us for one year. Oh, yeah, he's a saint again, you know, he's, he's forgiven. That's how it is down here with the saints. Of course we forgive him. He's been winning. Since it's just a matter of, you know, winning and losing, as easily on top of the mountain you can be down in the valley. And what about his personal life? Time has healed some of those wounds, too. The sting of his sister's suicide has subsided, and his father seems to have won his battle with cancer. I think from the adversity and the sadness that I've had in my life, it's helped me um, build more character and, you know, mature more as an individual. When I was a senior in college, I had a wife and kid, and I was on food stamps for four months. So I, I knew how to appreciate the good times when you've been through the bad times. Bobby Hebert's story, one of the more moving ones that we have seen in a long time. And the athletic side of it continues in just a few minutes. And Al and Dan and I'll be back in just a moment. The Canon NFL Wild Card Playoff Report. Brought to you by Canon. America's number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. Thursday. People pushing it to the limit. Every act, every move I make has a consequence. For the thrill of it. You just gotta love this sport. You just gotta love it. And on the job. Things go wrong. People 
people do die. Experience life on the extreme edge. Thursday at 9, 8 central. It's the Dodge Drive for the Gold Sales Drive. Now own Shadow America for only $69.84 thanks to a thousand cash back. On Caravan, get 500 cash back and you can get air at no extra charge. Up to $2,000 cash back on select Dodge trucks and package savings up to $2,683. Ask your Dodge dealer about some of his best financing rates this year. In the last three years, over a hundred appliance and electronic stores have closed their doors. At the same time, one store has grown to become America's largest with the top name brands, nationwide service, and 100 years of trust. Brand Central at Sears. No wonder more people count on Sears Brand Central than any other superstore. The signs are there. The signs are everywhere. It's the end of the year, and that means it's time to make your best deal at Nissan's year-end clearance. Get up to 100% financing and no payments until spring. With special factory-to-dealer incentives, save up to $500 on 92 Centris, up to 1,000 on 92 Stanzas. And now is the time to make your best deal on 92 Maximus. Get special factory-to-dealer incentives on almost all of the award-winning Nissans, now through January 3rd. Just follow the signs to your nearest Nissan dealer. Your Chicagoland Nissan dealers, right on the money, right now. The state's latest budget crisis, Sunday morning at 9. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. It's a wild card weekend in the NFL, and two teams are streaking towards a rubber match after a surprise order finish in the NFC West. Today's winner moves one step closer to the Super Bowl. The Saints and Falcons have already met twice this season. In Atlanta, the Saints rushing defense held the Falcons to only 33 yards rushing. Quarterback Bobby Hebert threw two touchdown passes to Floyd Turner, and the Saints stayed undefeated after five games with a dominating 27-6 win. The rematch in New Orleans, Atlanta's Chris Miller set the game into overtime with this touchdown pass to Michael Haynes. Then Norm Johnson kicked the game-winning field goal from 50 yards out to turn the Falcons' season around. The Falcons are now soaring, according to one of the league's premier personalities. We're a team on the rise. We're a team that's very underrated, not appreciated, but totally dedicated. <laughs> It's a wild card playoff game in the wild, wild NFC West. The NFC wild card playoff game. The Atlanta Falcons versus the New Orleans Saints. Brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Old Spice Fragrance and Aftershave. Cool, crisp, and unmistakably masculine. Old Spice. By Mylanta Antacid. My doctor said Mylanta. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. The Superdome. It'll be rocking today. Nearly 70,000 partisan fans on hand. A city waiting to watch for New Orleans Saints, the division champions of the NFC West for the first time in the franchise's history. And they go today against the Atlanta Falcons. The Saints coming in at 11-5. The Falcons at 10-6. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Glad you stuck around. Hope you've enjoyed the Kansas City Raider game. Just setting the facts for you once again. The New Orleans Saints did win the division at 11-5. The Falcons were the wild card at 10-6. And, and the New Orleans Saints were a very curious team. They went 7-0, and, oh, and then all of a sudden they went 9-1. and one. These two teams played twice, of course. We've already documented that. The New Orleans Saints blew the Atlanta Falcons away in Atlanta. Then they came back here five weeks ago, and it was the Falcons who won in overtime 23-20. to 20. So both teams are on a bit of a roll as Bobby Hebert came back to spark the New Orleans Saints to a big win on Monday night two weeks ago over the Raiders and a 27-3 victory over Phoenix that locked up the division when Dallas knocked off Atlanta last week. But Al Michaels, no matter how you look at it, you've got to say the Falcons are 
are a hot team right now. The Saints are there also, but this is a team that's won a five out of their last six. They're happy the way they have played down the stretch. Indeed. And one thing about Atlanta, they're like their eccentric coach, Jerry Glanville. They live on the edge. Jerry says, we make people nervous. You don't know what you're going to get with the Atlanta Falcons. But as far as the Falcons are concerned, when you take a look at their component parts, defensively, they're a little suspect. They gave up 56 points to Washington, and they've given up 30 or more in three other games. As far as their running game is concerned, they have a number six pick rookie as their feature back. For them to have their best chance to win this game, they have to utilize their red gun offense, which is a first cousin to the run and shoot, and Chris Miller, the quarterback, has to have a very hot day. And there he is. He's been coming along, but he is streaky. He has to get hot today to give Atlanta its best chance. But, Dan, that is much easier said than done because he goes up against the number two defense in the league and the team that gave up the fewest points in the league this season. Yeah, uh, that makes them number one in my book because points are what really count, Al. But really, uh, that defensive ranking was achieved with different personnel at the cornerback position. The New Orleans Saints are in trouble in their secondary, and they're not helped at all by the fact that the Atlanta Falcons today will play mostly in that four wide receiver set. Virtually every healthy DB for the Saints is going to have to play today, and if by chance they have any injuries during the course of the game, it's going to be tough for New Orleans to adjust. Where does the pressure come from then? It better come from uh, Pat Swilling and Ricky Jackson, the two outside pass rushers. If they don't meet at Chris Miller today, if they don't get there often, I pray there's too much pressure might be put on the New Orleans secondary. Bobby Abair loosening up for the New Orleans Saints. Those last two games against the Raiders and against Phoenix. Those numbers. The 300-yard-plus night he had against the Raiders was only the second 300-yard game of his six-year NFL career. Jim Mora, he is the only coach who has ever guided the Saints to a winning season. He is the only coach who has ever guided the Saints into the playoffs. This is the third playoff game in the history of the New Orleans Saints. They've yet to win. They lost to Minnesota here in 87. They lost to the Bears in Chicago last year. Norm Johnson, the longtime Seattle Seahawk who lost his job to John Casey in preseason and then was picked up by Atlanta, and he's had a great year. Kicks off for the Falcons. And back deep, Fred McAfee, the rookie, the man in the middle. And the kick is taken by McAfee from the nine back to the 22-yard line. Saints begin at the 22-yard line with Bobby Abair. Born in the area, went to school in the area, raised and makes his home here, and has become once again a popular man. Fennerty starts, so we will see a lot of the rookie McAfee and also Hilliard. Jordan, the blocking back. Martin, an early outside. Brenner is the tight end. And the guys up front, including Stan Brock, in his 12th season, so he has been through the thick and the thin, mainly the thin, but here he is in the playoffs, first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Bear throws, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Hobie Brenner. Over the middle, he was blanketed by the outside linebacker, Robert Lyle. Now the Atlanta defense, and they gamble a lot. Brian, Mo Gardner, the Illinois rookie, has done a nice job at nose tackle, and Tim Green is undersized at right end. Lyles, Rady, Tuggle is a man to watch, and Darian Connor on the outside. The great corners, McKayer and Sanders. Jordan is the strong safety, and the veteran Scott Case, the free safety. They love to blitz. They love to send the secondary. Second down and 10 from the 22. McAfee. A sixth-round draft choice out of Mississippi College. And that's not Ole Miss. Mississippi College, a small school, tackled by Tim Green. It'll be third and nine. New Orleans opening with two tight ends, trying to run the ball, control the game. Obviously, they'd like to do that, going against the defense of the Atlanta Falcons that was ranked 24th overall in the National Football League and 23rd against the rush. They'd like to run the football, but Atlanta very firm in this opening series. Very solid. Four wideouts, third down and nine at the 22-yard line. 
Hebert with the play clock down to five. And they give it to the up back. It's a fumble by Hilliard who picks it back up and then is swarmed under. Unusual looking play. Hilliard lined up right next to Bear in effect, taking the handoff, fumbling it, recovering it, but the Saints are stopped and they're forced to kick. You know, I think, Dan, that's a good play if you get the blitz. And they were anticipating the blitz from Atlanta. They didn't get it. That's a big play if you get the blitz. It didn't work. Yeah, Hilliard walked up close to the line of scrimmage to put himself in position to block for that blitz. And I wonder if Bear knew he had moved up that far. That might have been the problem. Bobby Bear might not have known that Dalton Hilliard came in and was only about a yard away from it. Tommy Barnhart to do the punting. Sanders to receive it at the 40. There's a flag down as Barnhart got buried. Sanders brings it back to the 47, but we're gonna probably have a, a roughing call. Tracy Johnston, number 43, ran into Barnhart. And that's the signal from Howard Rowe, the referee. Johnson comes right up the middle. Well, they blocked seven yep. kicks this year, and they really go for it. Special teams means a lot to Jerry Glanville. Tracy Johnson, Listen there he is right in the middle of your screen, number 43. Roughing the kicker, 15-yard penalty. It's a clean Push miss, down. and he buries Barnhart, and that is a very good call by the official. The punter is so vulnerable in that position. Actually, Barnhart quite lucky he had his left leg up in the air, or he would have really gotten his knee caved in. But so typical of the way the Falcons play football. It is all out every play. Oftentimes good, sometimes bad. Look at that. Three punts, two field goals, two extra points. It was almost eight, but this is what happens. Almost results in a Saints first down. First and 10, New Orleans at the 37. Just the start of things in the Superdome. With Tice in motion. The fake to McAfee. Hebert, after buying time, goes deep and incomplete because McHire was right there on Quinn Early. Had him totally blanketed. Uh, we talked about these two corners. Tim McHire, who, McHire, who of course, came from Miami in a trade this past season, number 22. You've heard a lot about him. They locked him up man-on-man -man all the time, and here he comes. He's locked up tight on early Quinn, and he is looking right back at the quarterback. He has good acceleration. Once that ball is in the air and released, forget it. He is going to be on the man, and this is what New Orleans is going to have to be concerned with because these two guys are deadly on the corners. Both of them have six interceptions, and they're great return men when they pick it off. Second and 10 at the 37-yard line. Early in motion. Again, the fake to McAfee, and then he dumps it off for Jordan, who makes a juggling catch. He makes the catch before stepping out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It's a gain of about five. Scott Case on the coverage. That time, Bobby Hebert got some good protection up front. There was a blitz, and it was picked up. But Jordan made it exciting to see the blitz pick up in the middle, and it's not often you'll see a, a running back who botches the first catch that badly and then is still able to maintain his concentration and pick it up. It'll be third down and five and since the umpire comes in and blows the whistle you know what that means. That means they're going to review it upstairs. Question will be whether or not Jordan had control of the ball before he went out of bounds. The process of juggling the ball he way did ate up a lot of yardage. Let's get a look at it. Kenny Wolf, our producer, Craig Janoff, our director. Let's really bring it on up, the guys. field is the completion. Play is under review. All right, let's take a look at it if we could. This ought to give us the best angle from behind the play. Now, where does he have possession? Obviously not there. He does have it there. Let's see the right. There's the left down. Oh, and he drags the right. An excellent job there by Buford Jordan. That's a legitimate catch. Not only Dan, did he have the poise to catch the ball in the second bobble he had enough concentration and poise to get that the other foot down you see it drag inbounds and that'll be a completion play stands is called on the field completed pass ends up third down <laughs> much to mr glanville's chagrin it is ruled as it was on the field a catch and justifiably so third and five saints at their own 42 this drive kept alive on a roughing the kicker penalty 1242 left in the first quarter Six defensive backs for Atlanta now on the third and 
should pass down third and five. You know, this is no surprise that New Orleans is throwing the ball, least of all to Jerry Glanville. He told us yesterday that he was sure that the Saints were going to come after them by throwing the ball. And another one. We talked about Jesse Tuggle, the linebacker that would play a major role today, and Jerry Glanville says he's about the best I've ever seen. That's a big statement that he stands by it. And there he is. He never leaves the field. He stays in on the prevent defense. He's in there in the nickel and the dime, and he's in there right now with six DBs. Whistle, I believe, is to reset the play clock. Game clock should read 12.45. And the game clock as well, 12.45. The play clock should read 17 seconds. And third and five when we resume play as the Saints come up with four wide receivers. Three to the left. He wants that clock to read 17. And apparently they can't set it from 35 to 17 without counting it down. <laughs> I know. You got to do it right. Yeah. But the Saints are on the ball. They'll snap once the whistle blows and the referee tells them to start. They'll snap the ball within five seconds. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Aver obviously impatient. And the Falcons have had a long look at this formation. And New Orleans has had a long look at that defense. Third and five. That's Martin in motion. Hebert from the gun. Throws an out pattern. It is caught by Martin, and Martin has a first down. Well, Martin is the control man. Bear has looked at this defense. They played each other twice before. He has seen it. He knew where he could put the ball to his control man, the underneath man, Eric Martin, the leading receiver, and Martin just does squeak the first down, takes it away from Bobby Butler. Martin caught 66 passes during the regular season. Floyd Turner caught 64. Tice in motion and then sets in the slot to the right. First down from the 47-yard line. Went early in motion to the left and a little toss to the rookie McAfee. And he is met and pushed back from the line of scrimmage. Brian Jordan makes the initial hit. And Jerry Glanville loves to talk about getting a lot of hats on the ball. It means a lot of tacklers, and you'll see that a lot from the Atlanta Falcons. And I'm not sure that Brian Jordan needed a lot of help. That was uh, just a fine open field tackle by this duel sport guy Brian Jordan a, a baseball player in the St. Louis Cardinals baseball organization was all the way up to the triple A level wasn't he Al? played in Louisville last yeah. year watch this tackle though Jordan's going to come in from the right and look at him get the shoulder down and boy that's just a that's a good tackle on McAfee and it's there's a the Falcons a lot of two-way people Dalton Hilliard is the sole running back in this set on second and 11 over the middle of made by Quinn Early, a first down at the Atlanta 40. He is tackled by Bobby Butler. Again, the blitz was on. The Falcons gambling and watched at the top of your screen. And McKire is working on Early, and Early beat McKire just as we watched Michael Irving of the Dallas Cowboys do it a week ago. McHire is the man you want to go against if you get a man-for-man -man situation, and it pays off early for the Saints. First down at the 40-yard line, 10.35 remaining in the scoreless first quarter. Bear escaping pressure, throws, the catch is made at the 28-yard line by Eric Martin. Another first down. You heard my colleagues talking about Eric Martin, a number of catches he led the team. He's led this team for five consecutive years, and it's catches like that that make you do it over time. Not a blazingly fast guy. He's not going to run by anybody if they're trying to keep him from running by, but just nice hands and good precise routes by Eric Martin. Good work by Bear too. That really is not his strong suit, rolling out and throwing the football, but he got it right in there about the only place it could be caught. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. and he is hit immediately by Jesse Tuggle after a minimal game. We mentioned at the top, the Falcons like to live on the edge, and because they live on the edge, they haven't had the ball yet. Remember, they stopped New Orleans, three and out, 
but then the roughing the kicker penalty, and that's what happens when you live on the edge. A lot of penalties, and New Orleans tries to capitalize on it. Here's a guy that's disappointed about not being picked to the Pro Bowl this year. Jesse Tuggle, by far and away, the leading tackler of the Atlanta Falcons, and that was just a nice three. Slid right into the hole, stayed with it, wrapped up, and brought the guy down by himself. Second and eight from the 26-yard line. Six minutes into the game, no score. Hebert stepping up again. Over the middle, wide open, touchdown, Turner. Oh, Dion. Dion let Turner go, and he was wide open, and Bobby Abear. He has great presence. We saw him a couple of weeks ago after being out for six or eight weeks. Come on and just look like you've been there forever. Now watch this. Top of your screen. And Dion starts to take him in. He looks like he thinks he's going to get help. Lets him go, and he just pulls up at the goal line. Floyd Turner, easy touchdown. Well, Again, they gamble a lot, and they make a lot of mistakes. Sanders is playing zone. I mean, Sanders was playing his outside third of the field. He pointed over into the middle to yell to whoever was supposed to be there. <laughs> there was no and, one there. But here he comes. I mean, it it was obvious that Deion Sanders was playing a zone coverage all the way. And I don't want to overstate my own athletic prowess, but I think I could have thrown a touchdown <laughs> pass there. You might have even have caught it. <laughs> Turner was wide open for a TD. We asked California artist Ed Lister to give us his impressions of the all-new 1992 Buick Skylark to capture the lyrical lines, the liquid flow, the dash of flair, and above all, the quality that makes this the Buick of its class. Did he capture Skylark? Decide for yourself. But one thing's for certain. Skylark is the Buick that will change a lot of impressions about Buick. cities across the Atlantic than any other U.S. airline, Delta now makes it easier than ever for the people of America to get to know the people of Europe. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Sia. Good dark. Ritchie. Delta. We love to fly in a show. Strasdurchen. 
Ever feel like you've forgotten something? Fuel? Maybe it's because you haven't been to McDonald's yet for your own original Indiana Jones videos. Just $5.99 each with the purchase of any large sandwich all day long. Drop into McDonald's today and get an Indy video for just $5.99 each. The best price ever with the purchase of any large sandwich any time of day. Collect all three. Just stop by McDonald's and ask for today's video. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> if you don't hurry, it could be. Introduces the new supercharged Ultra for 1992. With 20% more power. 205 horsepower to be exact. Ultra truly ranks among the world's finest luxury performance sedans. The new 1992 supercharged Ultra from Buick. The new symbol for quality in America. The excitement. The action and the moves. From the field to the stands, the fun of the World League returns in March on ABC Sports. On the left is Vince Buck, and on the right is Troy Cook. Under more normal circumstances for the Saints, they would be the starting cornerbacks. But both are gone for the year, gone for the playoffs. And thus, the Saints with a rebuilt secondary. On defense for the first time, Atlanta has it at the 20. And Miller back to throw on first down, and that's incomplete. Intended, I believe, for George Thomas. A couple of receivers in the area, including Mike Pritchard, number 35. Now you talked about Buck and Cook being out of the line. That's the good, that's the bad news. The good news is that Reggie Jones started today at left cornerback. Now he has been out for a couple of weeks with a bad shoulder, but he's in there. Eric Pegram is a sixth-round draft choice from North Texas State. George Thomas, Pritchard, Risen, and Haynes. Haynes is the big play guy, the four wideouts. A very good offensive line. The 14-year veteran, Ken, Hoover, Duke, the veteran, Fralick, and Chris Hinton, the one-time Colt. At the 20, second down, and 10. Very noisy in the dome, as usual. And this is the rookie, Pegram. It'll be third down. He's hit by Sam Mills, number 51, who'll be going to the Pro Bowl. And let's take a look at this Saint defense. Number two against the run, number two against the pass, number two overall. Martin, Warren, the two defensive linemen with Jackson, Mills, and Swilling in a three linebacker set. And then when they go to the 60 Bs against this red gun, Jones, Lee, Mack, Atkins, who had three interceptions last week, Maxie and Glenn, are the six DBs. And once they get them in there, they only have one left over, as Dan pointed out. Third down and 10. That's Jason Phillips in motion, number 82. Play clock down to three. Miller going deep on third and 10, and incomplete as Floyd Dixon had gotten loose in the secondary, but Miller couldn't get it to him. Oh, boy, and we saw Atlanta blow a zone a while ago. They lost six points on it. That time, New Orleans did the same thing. Only this time, Chris Miller, a little anxious, tried to lay it up so that Dixon could take it in stride, but he was wide open for a big gain, or at least to midfield. Falcons don't gain a yard on their first possession. Scott Fulhage to punt. Gil Fennerty back to receive for New Orleans. Kennedy calls for a fair catch at the 39-yard line. So the Saints get the ball right back. They have it with 7.46 left in the opening quarter in a wild card game in the Superdome. 7-0 Saints. A lot of cars are taking aim at the imports these days. Well, one American car is very much on target. Buick. Here's their latest hit, the all-new 1992 Skylark. Completely redesigned with more power and advanced features like standard anti-lock brakes. Skylark for 1992. It's got everything you've been looking for. Plus the one thing only Buick can offer you. Buick quality. My dad had ulcers. So when my stomach started acting up, I was afraid to go to the doctor. But finally, I went. <laughs> was I relieved when my doctor said my lanta? He said it was indigestion. 
not an ulcer. And my kind of indigestion called for a strong medicine. Mylanta is strong medicine, strongly recommended. In fact, Mylanta is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said Mylanta. You demand the same things from your car that you demand from your budget. Both have to go more places, last longer, and work harder than ever. So get the Walmart price on the motor oil engineered for today's smaller cars. Castro GTX. Castro provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. The Walmart price provides maximum protection against paying too much. Walmart. Always a low price. Always. Sunday, the historic fight for freedom against the Roman Empire. Stanley Kubrick's restored classic with footage never seen on television. Spartacus, Sunday. That's tonight's primetime lineup here on ABC. First, an all-new hour of music and laughs. Sinbad and Friends. Then the Young Riders and the Commish. Primetime tonight, Saturday night on ABC. Chris Miller, after his first series, back on the... Atlanta sideline as the Saints have it at their own 39-yard line, first and 10. New Orleans is up 7-0. And Bear to the air again. Bear hits Martin. Martin with the first down before he's taken down by Jordan. And Bear, after missing on his first two attempts, has completed the last six. Brian Jordan, the strong safety, 6'1", 205-pounder, is not the cover man you want on Eric Martin. Eric Martin with the quick feet and the good moves. Jordan perhaps is all right on a tight end to Hobie Brenner, but not on Eric Martin. He just leaves him with a little quick break to the outside and gets first down yardage. Jordan appeared to be intrigued, Frank, with what was going on back <laughs> in the backfield. Yeah, <laughs> Captivated to the point that he was uh, trailing Martin by several yards. Saints at the Falcon 42. Falcons, as they always do, show blitz. And they're coming on a run as McAfee takes it to the 41-yard line for a short gain. It'll be second and nine. Well, for the Falcons in the NFC West, there it is. In eight of the last, or seven of the last eight years, they have finished last, and then they were next to last in the 14th division in 1986. And today, they come in as the wild card, and it's the first time they've been in the playoffs since the strike short in 82 season. You always hear coaches stress consistency, but that's not type. That's not the type they look for. No. Second and nine at the 41 yard line. Three man rush. Hilliard takes the pass over the middle and pays the price as he is knocked down at the 36 yard line by Tuggle and Rady. Good job of the umpire that time getting out of the way. He almost gets almost gets hit with the football. Let's look at Tuggle number 58. He reads it quickly, just drops into his hook zone. A quick close on Dalton Hilliard. And Jesse Tuggle, a guy who plays most of his games on Sunday afternoon to regional audiences, has been yearning for this national exposure. Looks like he's set to make the most of it. Four wide receivers for the Saints. The Falcons better be concerned with 84, Mark. Third and four at the 36-yard line. 5.30 to go in the quarter. 7-0 New Orleans. Four-man rush, Hebert over the middle, and Floyd Turner is inside the 20 and down to the 14-yard line, tackled by McHire. Hebert just locked up with Turner, the speedster. Turner had a great year, 64 receptions. Had two touchdowns in the first meeting in the blowaway at Atlanta by New Orleans. Here he comes, just bounces off McHire, gets the jump on McHire. McHire is not even... Close enough to make a play on the ball. If you're going to jam a receiver as a cornerback, you better interrupt his release a little more than McKayer did right there. That was a, a clean release for Turner that allowed him to get across the field. He burned them in the regular season to Turner, and he's burning them again in the first quarter today. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Bear the fake, throws, and this time he hits Turner again down to the 6-yard line, a little short of the first down. He's sandwiched by Case and Sanders. Jerry, Jerry Glanville yesterday was talking to us about the characteristics of this Falcon team, and he said, I guarantee you tomorrow there will be a couple times that we're out of it, but we always come crawling back into a game. Well, they better get with it here, or they're on the verge of being down 14-0 at the beginning 
you know, just a little over halfway through the first quarter. And Dion, he's great coverage, but he was laying off six, seven, eight yards, and the ball inside the 15-yard line. you got to play tighter than that. Second and one, it's the first time they've come up in a two-back set. They break it with motion. They give the ball to Buford Jordan, and he bangs his way. He pinballs his way down to the four-yard line. Stopped by Tuggle, and it should be a first down. I think the first tackler at him was John Rady, the inside linebacker, and he bounced off. The New Orleans Saints are in scoring position as they move inside the five-yard line. And they like being in this area. Yeah. As you can see, they almost always get in. Tops in the NFL once they're inside the five. And if you're going to go against a team, why not Atlanta? They are one of the lightest teams up front you're going to find in the league. They're very small up front. The Saints are very big. First and goal from the three. That's Wayne White in motion. A Bears dropped in the end zone. John Tice had his hands on it. He was covered by the safety Jeff Donaldson. Second and goal. He covered well he was by Donaldson. I think Bobby A Bear thought that he had a touchdown when he let it go, but a beautiful job of playing the football by Donaldson. Watch him make his move. Move in front and at the last minute, pull the arm down. You see, that's that's a trick a safety has to learn early. If you aren't in a position to be in front of the receiver, be in a position to pull down his arm so he can't control the ball. Bear had hit nine straight. Second and goal at the three. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Saints up seven zip. Jordan. A yard or so, Oliver Barnett, 72 in on the tackle, third and goal, and let's go back and take another look at the pass play. Donaldson really living on the edge. Dan hit it just right. The ball is in there. It's caught by Tice. Now here comes the arm stripping the ball away. That's a great play, uh, but again, Donaldson living right on the wire with that one because he was beaten. Well, it was all he had left to play. Exactly. <laughs> and maybe Abear may be a little too careful with it. It's Carl Smith, the offensive coordinator. Former Bakersfield College football star. Thought I'd drop that in. Local knowledge. And the play he has called has four wideouts. With Dalton Hilliard, the sole running back. Third and goal from the three. A Bear throws. It's picked off in the end zone by Deion Sanders, who is tackled in the end zone. That is a touchback. So Deion Sanders makes a big, big play to stave off a New Orleans touchdown, to keep it at seven to nothing, and to give Atlanta the ball back at the 20-yard line. Oh, how many he's made this year, too. He depends on that quickness, the speed. I don't know anyone as quick as he is, and he does make the big play, Al. Achieve superior results. Now? Don't be so impatient. You need superior tools. Since 1843, a company from New Britain, Connecticut, has been helping people do things right. Okay. Try it now. Finally. Stanley. All right. You know, someday these tools could be yours. How about the car, Dad? Stanley Mechanics Tools at leading retailers. It wakes up sleepy purples and helps canary yellows to fly. It gives the blues a wonderful bump and even helps the roses to look rosier. It's Fuji color and it's the reason why more people are looking into Fuji film every day. Fuji, a new way of seeing things. Undefeated Washington goes after the national crown when they meet Heisman winner Desmond Howard and Big Ten champ Michigan. It's the Rose Bowl New Year's Day on ABC Sports. An offensive explosion by the Falcons so far. 
Nary a yard. Zero, zero, zero. But they're down only 7 nothing. Sanders has just turned in a big play with the interception. Atlanta has it at the 20-yard line. Crowd in an uproar. And the catch is made by Pritchard. That's a 15-yard gain. We were talking to Chris Hinton, the tackle for Atlanta last night. He said the last time they played here, he said, I didn't hear one snap count. Well, Hinton and Ken, the two tackles, are playing the entire game, not planning on hearing the quarterback at all. They are looking with their peripheral vision into the football and moving on the football. Now, one advantage, I think, for the Falcons here is how they match up against the Saints. The Saints' two best pass rushers are Jackson and Swilling, and they have to go against the Saints, uh, the Falcons' two best linemen, Mike Ken and Chris Hinton. That is a, that's a matchup that works well for Atlanta. First and ten, Rising stays in the block. The catch is made by Haynes. That's a first down. He takes it to the 43. He has been their big play man, a guy who averages over 22 yards a catch during the regular season, and he begins the playoffs with a 22-yard reception. Unbelievable speed, and up very close is Reggie Jones playing him very tight, but still respecting that speed. And when it looked like Haynes was going to kick it into overdrive, it broke to the sidelines. All of a sudden, he was open. Here's Mike Ken, number 78, working against Pat Swilling. Swilling had 17 sacks this year, led the league in two meetings, shut out by Mike Ken. Mike Ken has Pat Swilling's number. Mike told me yesterday he's only given up one sack to Pat Swilling in his entire career. Richard in motion. Here is Eric Keegram. The rookie takes it to the 40. That's a gain of three. Swilling makes the tackle, and that will be the oh. final play of the quarter. Swilling that time forced to the outside by Ken. Shows you the athletic ability he has. Watch top of your screen, 56, familiar number. A lot of great players are wearing it. Way to the outside, he still gets back and makes the stop on Keegram. And that is the end of the first quarter. New Orleans 7, Atlanta nothing. We'll return to ABC's NFL Wild Card Playoff game after this message and a word from our ABC station. Freedom. It's the spirit which moves the Cutlass Supreme, a car intelligently engineered to free your eyes, your hands, your senses. Introducing the new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The look may change, but the spirit remains the same. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Celebrate New Year's Eve Chicago style Tuesday night. And welcome back to ABC's NFL wildcard playoff game, which is being brought to you by Mercedes Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Second and seven as we start. The second quarter, New Orleans on top, seven to nothing. Falcons from the same 40, and a sack of Miller, and a loose football. No signal yet from the officials, and now it is a fumble, and New Orleans has it. I think Ricky Jackson was the Saint that gets in there and gets the hit. 
This great all-pro from Pitt in his 11th year comes in from the outside. And let's see if he's not the New Orleans Saint that gets it. All right, Hinton stays inside, and Fralick is late coming back to the outside, and it was Jackson that comes in and hits Miller. That's a blocking scheme, Frank, that's very tough to be effective with, pulling a guard all the way out to get a blitzing linebacker. And I wanted to add, what you said earlier, Dan, that without a tight end, it brings both Ricky Jackson and Pat Swilling in a step and a half closer. They are very quick. Jackson, who sacked Miller three times in the first game, nails him again. The only one of the Saints starting four linebackers not going to the Pro Bowl this year. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Early in motion. McAfee hangs forward for a gain of nine. That recovery by Jackson is nothing new. Ricky last year had seven fumble recoveries. This year, Jackson had four to share the league lead. So Ricky picks one up in the playoffs to give New Orleans the ball back. Man, he's been in so many Pro Bowls, it doesn't matter. He's well, been around for a while, and he has seen his share of Pro Bowls now in his 11th year. And it's going to keep happening to the Falcons if they don't change their blocking scheme. You cannot pull a guard out from inside like they were asking Bill Fralick to do and come out and expect to seal Ricky Jackson from making that corner. You've got to slide the line. Hit, uh, Fralick will pick up the guy in front of Hinton. Let Hinton pick up Ricky Jackson. Second and a long one. McAfee again. McAfee found the hole, picks up the first down, wrestled down by Scott Case at the 33-yard line. Oh, what a story this youngster is. Sixth-round draft pick. They cut him on the uh, on the last cut, and he has been the running game and the offensive spark plug for these Saints over the past half of the season. You see the massive time of possession advantage for the New Orleans Saints, 11.45 to 3.15. For a while there, the Falcons didn't have any yards at all. They finally got on with 40. And the one Saint turnover didn't hurt. 7-0 Saints, 13 and a half minutes left in the half. Three tight end set for New Orleans. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. The short drop by Hebert, the quick flip to Turner, and he gets buried as he reaches the 28-yard line. It's a gain of about five. Turner locked up once again with man-for-man -man coverage by Dion, and you got to respect Turner. Look how far Dion plays. Now, he doesn't take a rapid drop, and he relies on his speed to get back to the receiver, but when you have a timing pattern like that with Bear and Turner, Bear was releasing that ball when Turner pulled up, and no way Dion is going to get back to it. The ball came loose there. You can see it, but Turner's knee was already down on the ground, and really, somehow, the ball came back to him. Second and five, they've got Hilliard split top of the screen to the left, and they send early in motion to the bottom. And this is Buford George, the fullback, normally the blocking back, but seeing some action as a ball carrier today, and he is stopped by Rick Bryan, and he's a guy who is not only filling the blocking back role, but some of the ball carrying duties today that would normally uh, be accomplished by one Ironhead Hayward, who has been suspended. Yeah, we were here a couple of weeks ago for that Monday nighter with the Raiders, and Hayward had been suspended in the week prior to that game by Jim Moore, and he said this is for the rest of the year, that Ironhead won't be back. He didn't rule out that he'll be back next year, but he is definitely finished for 91. Undisclosed reason, but he just said for a violation of team policy. Third and six with Wesley Carroll in motion. For Turner again, but he is out of bounds. Turner is out of bounds at the five. Great defensive play there by McIver. Got in front of Turner, bumped him in the five-yard zone where he's allowed that bump. Took away his quickness and his speed, and then was able to go stride for stride with Turner. And Aber had no place to put it, but it was a good pass by Aber just to get rid of it. See, there's the bump that's allowed, and he forces him to take it out of bounds. Good coverage by McIver. I think his right foot. Let's check where it lands. The right foot looks like it yeah, landed it in. If he could have dragged that left foot, he would have had a catch, but pretty tough to do with a ball that was thrown that far outside of it. 45-yard field goal attempt for Morton Anderson, one of the best ever. And that looks like a kick off the foot of one of the best ever. 45-yarder, Al. That baby was well up into the net. Mm -hmm. It was going up. It was. And right down the middle. 
They settled for three after the bubble recovery. It's 10 to nothing, New Orleans. This new S-Class is so many things. Space, strength, and safety, of course. But more than anything else, it's the performance that will astonish people. Because it's so quick, so agile. If you don't love driving this car, maybe you just don't like driving. To me, there's nothing better than winning a Super Bowl or an NASCAR race. That's why when my race team hits the circuit, there'll be an interstate battery cranking it up. Interstate's my kind of battery because it's got the power and stamina it takes to be a winner. So insist on an interstate battery from over 200,000 automotive service repair and parts centers everywhere. Call 1-800-CRANK-IT for the one nearest you. You win every time with Interstate. New Year's Day, Wednesday, a triple header for you here on ABC. We start at 1.30 Eastern, Florida Citrus Bowl. The California Golden Bears take on the Clemson Tigers in the best bowl matchup of the day, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, second-ranked Washington against Michigan and Desmond Howard at 445. And this crew will be right back here in the Superdome for the Sugar Bowl, Notre Dame against third-ranked Florida at 8.30, New Year's night. What separates the University of Miami and the University of Washington in the bowl? Very, very little. <laughs> Here's Anderson's kick, and again, giving Sanders no opportunity to run it back. Eleven thirty-two remaining in the first half. ABC's NFL Wild Card Playoff game is being brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. If you missed it earlier today in Kansas City, the Chiefs advance. They knocked off the Raiders 10-6. They don't know whether they will go to Buffalo or to Denver. That depends on what happens in the Houston. New York Jet game tomorrow. Mike Rozier is in the game as the running back behind Chris Miller, the quarterback. Saints nearly jump, but get back on side, and Miller to throw on first down. This is Pritchard with a convoy in front of him, and the rookie from Colorado picks up 15, his second 15-yard reception of the day. Well-designed play, Dan. That was a little screen to the flanker with the running back, Rozier, out in front of it. Well, one of the things, Frank, you really would like to have happen is to have a blitz come from the side that you called the screen, and that's exactly what happened that time. Ricky Jackson came from the outside, which took him completely out of the play, and that's just one of those things. You call it, and it happens to work out just right. See, there's Jackson at the top of your screen. Watch him come. There's Swilling. He's down, cut down again, out of the play. That's why it's successful. It's a chess game. First down, Atlanta at the 35-yard line. Here's Mike Rozier. Nice move by Rozier to break tackles in the backfield and turn what would have been a loss into a seven-yard gain. Reggie Jones knocks him down. Former great star, Heisman Award winner in Nebraska, and then, of course, the USFL, and then at Houston, and probably would have seen much more of him had it not been that I think Jerry Glanville flat wants the youngster in the Pegram to pick up any potential blitz. And that's, if there's one area the Rosier might be a little light on in, that is that. And you don't want to lose your quarterback. And so Rosier is going to get spot work. But great running back, Mike Rosier. Second and three, Falcons at the 42. Ten minutes to go in the half. Ten-nothing Saints. Rozier on second and three, has the first down a lot more, takes it across the 50, stopped at the same 48-yard line by Milton Mack. 
Well, the question now for the Atlanta Falcons, they seem to have gotten into a groove where they're moving the ball and moving it effectively. Can they, see, uh, can they keep from self-destructing? That's what they've been doing so far. All right, look right in the middle. Look at the good seal block on the left side. There's an effective block by Dukes, the center. Fralick, the right guard, turned out, and a gaping aperture in the middle of the Saints' defense. Hmm. First and 10 at the 48-yard line, rising in motion. Miller throws to Ryzen and incomplete, and that's about the best thing that could have happened to the Falcons because Gene Atkins was right there. He would have made the tackle for about a four-yard loss. Dan said it was a chess game. Remember two plays ago when they did the screen to the flanker on the right side, they caught him in the blitz over on that side. That time they caught him in a zone over on the left side. Forget it, there's no, no play at all. The zone rotates right up into it, and you're right. You hear coaches say all the time what a chess game it is, and we try to make the call, and we hope that they kind of move their men, their pieces in the other direction, and that's when you see a big play. Not guesswork, but it's studied for many, many hours over the course of the week. I look for frequencies, and they hope they get it. But sometimes it's just luck. <laughs> Second and ten. And over the middle, the catch is made by Mike Haynes, who normally goes further downfield. He is stopped at the 40-yard line. He is short of the first down by about three. Milton Mack is there on the tackle. Oh, a big job by Ken and Hinton and that offensive line because Chris Miller wanted to go deep. Right here, he wanted to deliver it. No one's open. Good coverage. He had to check off to about the third receiver and again Hinton working on Ricky Jackson then doing a fine job yep Jackson declares upfield Hinton just takes him and rides him that's not holding in the NFL Ken does the same thing on the other side to Swilling with that kind of time Chris Miller will move the football third and a short three at the Saints 40 yard line Rozier bursting through the middle, picking up five, keeping the drive going. First down at the 35-yard line, eight minutes to go in the half. Rozier was their second leading ground gainer this year. Their leading ground gainer, Steve Broussard, broken fibula, out for the rest of the playoffs. Neither team, by the way, had a guy gain more than 500 yards on the ground this year. It's the first postseason game in the NFL since 1953 without a runner who had gained 500 yards in the regular season. Rozier was over 600 a year ago, but he came in late. He didn't come in this year on a contract dispute until late September, or rather September the 2nd, and we're not too happy with him. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Here is Rozier again. Inside the 30 and hit down at the 28-yard line by Gene Atkins. So it's that kind of running that'll make him happy very quickly, though. No question, Rozier can get it done. He has size. He has the low center of gravity that all of a sudden is very popular throughout the league. Tough to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Now, well, Gene Atkins gave him a pretty good pop right there. Fralick's out front. He gets into Vaughn Johnson's knees. Doesn't knock him down, but keeps him out of the play. But that's, that's a pretty well-timed pop by Gene Atkins. Watch this thing here. I mean, that's... That's taking on a guy that outweighs you considerably in planning. Second and three at the 28-yard line. Rozier again. This is his fifth carry, and he takes it to the 22, and that's another first down. He's averaging about seven yards of pickup. Johnson in on the tackle with 6.30 to go in the half. What a nice move on Swilling to get back inside and get the first down yardage, and, and Mike Rozier is sucking it up. He is been the principal architect of this drive. And he really has not played that much. Came into the this afternoon's game with a little over 360 yards. He's been the main man on this drive. First and 10, Atlanta at the 22. 10 nothing Saints. Six minutes to go in the half. Miller with time. Miller throws into traffic and is lucky it wasn't intercepted by Brett Maxey. Oh, he was so lucky. He threw it right into the zone side of the Saints defense. There were three Saints in the area. Again, tremendous protection by his guys up front. And this was just a very, very poor choice by Chris Miller. 
He locked on to Ryzen and stayed with him the entire time. That's, again, look how he had the line of sight. And I don't know, he almost, <laughs> almost looks like he tried to throw it away and made a poor, poor throw of doing that. Second and 10 at the 22. Rozier. Yeah. Can't get on track. Loses the football. Saints have it at the 27. Frank Warren dislodged it, and Brett Maxey, who nearly had the interception, recovers the fumble. And Frank Warren dislodged it on purpose. That was no mistake. Frank Warren ripped at the right arm of Mike Rozier with his arm and intentionally pulled that ball out of there. Kind of reminiscent of what we saw early in the year in Chicago where Steve McMichael did it. Now take a look at Rozier. He's going to be stopped by Warren. But watch Warren's right arm. Watch him dig that ball out of there. And there it comes. The crowd is booing. I think one official may have said the ball was down before the fumble. It's a conference on the field. Rozier's yeah, knees might have down. been down. Let's take a look. Yeah, they Is the right knee down? down? No, it's not down. Well, the question might have been whether the left knee was down or had the whistle blown. The yeah. referee clearly signaled that it was going to be the New Orleans Saints football. Well, but he is superseded by the official. Yeah. There's another official, the man on the left. Right here. It's down. Look at the umpire right here on the left side of your screen. You see his arm pointing down right here. That's a good look at him saying he was down, and the guy here on the right is Early saying the it's play, the New Orleans Saints football. Call. The play has been reviewed. And now it's going to go to the booth. Well, two things they're probably going to look at, and one they will have a problem with, and that had the whistle blown, and also was the knee down. And I'm quite certain the knee was not down when the ball was ripped out of there by Warren. Well, there's no way to determine when the whistle blew. Exactly. Let's look. Let's just study the left knee. Well, we have a better shot than that. The You'll ball's out yeah. before the left knee is down. That is a perfect look at it, guys. That is a fumble. That is a fumble. Now, the other side of it is could be forward progress. You know, if they ruled that the play was over because there was a lack of progress. After further review, play stands is called on the field. It's a progress call, and that is decided on the field. Well, why do you review yeah. it? If the play is going to stand as called, what's the review for? If you're saying the play is dead because the whistle blew, what in the world are they reviewing it for? I don't know. A very fortuitous turn of events for the Falcons, though. Third and 12 at the 24-yard line. Miller throws, and they take advantage with a touchdown to Ryzen. What a break for the Falcons on what clearly should have been a fumble. The whistle is blown, they keep the ball, and they cash in. And I nominate Mike Rozier for the happiest man in America. Mm -hmm. He won't have to face this man. And Glanville is second. And let's take a look at Ryzen on his way to the Pro Bowl. A great couple of years after coming from Indianapolis. Spins around like a top. The defensive back covering him, Milton Mack, who wasn't even starting a few weeks ago, turns him around wide open right at the goal line. One of the premier receivers in football today, Andre Ryzen. Johnson for the point after. And the Atlanta Falcons right back in it. So clearly a fumble, but a break for the Falcons because the whistle had blown and the play was dead. 5.26 left in the half. It's 10-7 Saints. World League returns in March on ABC Sports. We ask pasta lovers in Italian neighborhoods to try microwave main meals from Chef Boyardee. These are absolutely good. Absolutely. It's delicioso. That's right. Try a little more. Perfect. The more you put in the mouth, the better the better to taste. You got tomato. Got meat. Little onion in here. Very good. The way you put onion in here. Well, you have to put onion in here. What's the matter with you? Very delicious. But my wife comes first. I'm surprised it's Chef Boyardee. Main meals from Chef Boyardee. Simply Italian, simply terrific. Very close to Italian. The best film of the year is Grand Canyon. What you so nervous about, man? The story of two strangers. Which one do you call for the truck? Brought together by chance. Sometimes you just get lucky. Two families united by hope. What if these are miracles, Mac? 
and six lives connected by something special. <laughs> Friendship. Siskel and Ebert call it one of the year's best pictures. From the director of The Big Chill, Grand Canyon. Rated R. Special sneak preview Saturday, January 4th in select cities. Some say we are obsessed with safety. Perhaps. But in the new S-Class, it goes way beyond dual airbags. If you look at rollovers, rear and offset frontal impacts, this isn't style, this is substance. Safety. You know, if we did nothing else, that would be reason enough for the new S-Class. Louisiana Superdome. Very well-maintained facility. Beautiful structure that opened uh, in the mid-70s. Right the down the street from the French Quarter and Bourbon Street. That will be certainly rocking tonight. Either way. <laughs> yes. Win or lose. Or Sugar Bowl crowds already arriving. I know a lot of people don't like domes. And football is better outside. But if you got to be in a dome, <laughs> this is the best of the best. Dorm Johnson... Boots it to the nine-yard line, and McAfee, the rookie, runs it back out past the 30 and all the way out to the 39, but they say he stepped out of bounds at the 33, and there's Bobby April, the special team coach. He was out of bounds at the 33-yard line. That's where the Saints have it with 5-14 left in the half. The car world wants headlines. They like quicker, quieter, roomier. But this new S-Class isn't that simple. You see, there are so many advances in this car that affect so many things. Handling, structural strength, performance, durability, reliability. Although I have to say, it is very quick. It is very roomy. It is very quiet. My house club always had Pert Plus in the locker room. It cleans, conditions, it's great. Then one day they switched. This one said it had conditioner in it, but my hair told a different story. Some two-in-ones don't lather as well or leave hair feeling as clean. Others don't fully condition, but Pert Plus's microbead conditioner leaves hair clean and completely conditioned. Now when I go to my club, my Pert Plus goes with me. Pert Plus, there's no two-in-one like this one. Monday. This case is a death trap. Mac puts the screws to a crooked slumlord and ends up at an exclusive housewarming. An all new MacGyver Monday. Couple of things. Number one, Mike Rozier has gone back into the locker room with a bruised knee, but now he is coming back. This is a live shot. He had gone back. He has a slight limp, as you can see. Probably a nice back he has on the lower part of it. Looks like below the knee. It is a first down at the 38-yard 30, line for the Saints. 5-14 to go in the half. And Hebert to throw. And the catch is made on the far side by Quinn Early. It's a minimal gain. McKayer makes the stop. To clear up the Rozier fumble, clearly it was a fumble. It was a bad call on the field. The whistle should not have blown. They did not review it. Howard Rowe had announced the play was being reviewed. The replay booth is saying we were just waiting to hear what they were saying. They cannot review that play in the replay booth. If the whistle blows and the play is dead, that's the end of that. And that's the end of that. Yep. <laughs> Except I'd like to... Well, <laughs> <laughs> you'll get a chance, but there is. <laughs> well, well, the, well oh. <laughs> second and eight at the 40-yard line. Here's McAfee. Funny playoff game. You've got McAfee on one hand, Pegram on the other, starting as the running back. Each a rookie, each a sixth-round draft choice. As I said earlier, McAfee actually cut and brought back to the practice squad after the season that started, activated in the sixth game, and came into this afternoon's game as a leading rusher for the New Orleans Saints. A spectacular second half of the season for the youngster Fred McAfee. Neither one of them was the tailback at USC either. No. McAfee from Mississippi College and Eric Pegram from North Texas State. Third and five up at the 44-yard line. You notice I got USC in there. Playing yeah, here. We'll work on Michigan. Uh-oh. Into traffic and nearly picked 
picked off. It was Mo Gardner, the nose tackle of all people who was downfield. Well, the Falcons like to cross you up, and that's crossing you up when your nose tackle is 10 yards down the field. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a new one for me, 6'2", 260 pounder dropping into your pass coverage. I've seen him take a man in the flat, a possible screen man, but never into the hook zone. Well, you know who'll do that every now and then? The Bears will do that with Richard Dent. They'll stand him up. That time, though, Mo Gardner was in a down stance like a tackle. And Son of a gun almost got it. As Landville said, we make people nervous. Tommy Barnhart to punt. Deion Sanders is back at the 10, but he's going to let it bounce. And the Saints can't stop it from crossing the line. Oh, and that was a good fake by Deion Sanders. He really did make it look like he was going to field the ball, then got out of there at the last minute. Smart play, Deion. 325 left in the half. It's what you talk about. If you want respect, you gotta earn it. Thank you. It's what you fight for. You gotta be ready to throw down, stand up, and die for that stuff. Check this out. It's gonna be a piece of cake, Q. Free trial! What is you scared? You're mixed up in it, aren't you? It's what you need to survive. Juice rated R. Starts Friday, January 17th at theaters everywhere. When you rent from Hertz in Florida, you get more than a great car at a great rate. The real bargain is the company behind the car. Because whatever it takes to make your vacation go smoothly, Hertz is there to make it happen. From emergency road service that's as close as a phone to free unlimited mileage. Wherever you roam, next time you're in Florida, wouldn't you feel better with Hertz behind you? Hertz with America's wheels. Some say we are obsessed with safety. Perhaps. But in the new S-Class, it goes way beyond dual airbags. If you look at rollovers, rear and offset front and impacts, this isn't style, this is substance. Safety. You know, if we did nothing else, that would be reason enough for the new S-Class. The Dogs against the Hogs. The Georgia Bulldogs take on the Arkansas Razorbacks in the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl Sunday on ABC Sports. 325 remaining in the first half. The Saints had taken a 10 to nothing lead. Falcons got a break on a bad call when a fumble was not ruled a fumble and they cashed in to make it 10-7 and now they have it at their own 20-yard line. Miller airs it out for Haynes, and he gets bumped. There is no flag. It is intercepted by Benchy Glenn. Chris Miller, Miller again, yeah. very well ill-advised, and into yeah. the double coverage. Inside, outside, on the receiver, and Benchy Glenn just looked it into the hand. Trying to hit the speedster, Michael Haynes, but you can't outrun a zone if you play properly. Watch 29 bottom of your screen and he's reading all the way back ball under thrown as a matter of fact a little yeah. bit Vincey Glenn in absolute perfect position Frank the ball was wobbling something terrible I, it almost looks like he lost it when he threw it but the ball has no spiral to it look at it right there look at the motion on the football that's why it dies and it's almost coming straight down almost like a punt by the time it's actually intercepted it gave the impression of a ball that kind of slipped out of Miller's hands when he threw it no question he can still throw it he had a Still has a plate screws in his right shoulder from a fractured shoulder a year ago. And he said it's no problem when we talked to him last night. First down, New Orleans at the 35-yard line. Bear with a lot of time, and that one is incomplete. Intended for early and back covering on the play was Brian Jordan. 3-11 to go in the first half. Chris Miller probably thinking about the wounded duck that he put up there. I'll touch on it early. He can get on tremendously hot streaks for you. And then he can be just about as erratic as you hate to see. 
He threw a bad pass a moment ago. Second and ten. Hilliard and Jordan are the split back. Saints with Bear trying to get it to Hilliard, but he was covered by Rady. It's incomplete. It's third down and ten, and that time Brian Jordan forced the issue on the safety blitz. Saints on top, 10 to 7. If the Saints win this game, they go to Detroit next week. If Atlanta wins the game, they go to Washington next week. Third and 10 from the 35. Incomplete. Turner had it in his hands, and Jordan said, uh, you're not going to have possession very long. Oh, that was a good look at Atlanta doing what they do so well. They got up and showed the blitz. They waited until Bear grabbed the pre-coverage at the line of scrimmage, and then they dropped back into their zone, and they had the man just sitting there waiting to make the pop. When you play zone defense, you take an area. If somebody comes into it, you hit them. If he had him. That's what Brian Jordan did right there. Barnhart the punt with 3.01 left in the first half. Deion Sanders from the 15, the ever dangerous Sanders, with a good return, steps out of the 36 yard line. That is a 21 yard run back, and that's where Atlanta will take over after Brian Ford forces him out of bounds. Well, for those of you who wonder what Deardorff eats beside Ultra Slim Fast, Dan went out and shot this video last night. If you have not had a beignet and some chicory coffee at the Cafe Beignet, you have not lived. I think growing up in Canada, you would ever be discussing beignet in New Orleans. That is wonderful, isn't it? He thought he'd be discussing Ben Gay, never Ben Gay. Uh, there are some players on the field that are discussing uh, various ointments and muscle relaxers. This has been an extremely hard-hitting first half. And a good game, like so many of the Atlanta-New Orleans games of the past, and a rivalry that has gone on since uh, these two teams came into professional football in the mid-60s, but never has an Atlanta-New Orleans game been more meaningful than this one. Miller throws. The catch is made by Haynes, and their big play man turns in a big play, taking it to the 44-yard line. Milton Mack makes the tackle. Talked about this rivalry in the history of these two teams. One's been in the league for 25 years, one for 26. They won a total of one postseason game. But Atlanta has never had Jerry Glanville around. <laughs> he came in a year ago. And he's a fun guy. What did he tell us last night? He said, you know, the losing coach of this game tomorrow, he said, guys, you ought to come on the air. That should be your opening statement. He ought to be fired. And we kind of looked at him quizzically. Said, "Look, how many jobs are open out there?" That's right. So this is the year to get fired. I'll go three and thirteen next next year, and there won't be any jobs open. <laughs> and so this is definitely the year to be a coaching free agent. <laughs> Rozier is back in the game as Miller gets set to oh. throw, nearly gets sacked. He was sure he was going to get sacked by a phantom, <laughs> and then gets knocked down by Frank Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the sacker? <laughs> <laughs> the most surprised guy in America that he didn't get hit was Chris Miller. <laughs> I guess he must have been a Boy Scout because he definitely was in. He was definitely following the be prepared. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> One more times than not, he would have been right. On the third Sunday in August, this place turns from a hard working ranch town into a hard riding rodeo town. And folks like us take it on the chin, in our bags, and about everywhere else. That's why most of us here rely on Tylenol. With all the choices Doc Hall has, he gives us the same thing he takes himself. From small town doctors to big city hospitals, Tylenol's the pain reliever America counts on. It's the one hospitals use most. All right, Angela, stretch up, arch your back. I remember the very first time I fell. I didn't want to ride again. But after Grandpa picked me up and put me back on, I knew I had to try. At at and we know every great athlete has been inspired by someone. As a proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team, we salute them all. After all these years, Grandpa's still there to pick me up. Imagine.
Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. Two servings of Coke Classic for $7.98 at Little Caesars. It's a party party. Two things here. Watch this matchup again right here between Pat Swilling and Mike Ken. And then this is again where we can watch Chris Miller. But watch Ken. He takes the upfield away from Swilling. Swilling's going to go back to the inside. Ken stays with him and rides him all the way back down. And then Chris Miller evades the phantom tackler, but not Frank Warren from behind. He maybe stepped over that snake that Jerry Glanville's been worried about for so long. Mike Ken in his 14th year, one of the great offensive tackles ever to play in the National Football League. Oh, he is a horse too, isn't he? This guy one time went 26 games without a penalty. Without a penalty of any kind. Given up what, one sack this season? Yep, this That's one. remarkable. Second and 12 for Atlanta at the Saints, 46. Two minutes to go in the first half. Rosier oh. fumbles again, and it falls right into the hands of Houston Hoover. So Rosier, who had got, gotten away with what should have been a fumble before, gets lucky again. I think it bounced right off the back of the center, Jamie Dukes, and then right to Hoover, who was thrown on the turf. And that was a very fortunate bounce Ooh. for the Falcons. Jer Jerry Granville didn't even hesitate. He turned to Pegram, gave him the thumb, get in there, and out comes Rosier. Okay, watch this. You're going to see the ball come out. And again, it's not that big a hit that knocks it out. It's more than stripped. There it hits Duke right to Hoover. And I don't know that the Falcons can count on being that lucky in trying to cover up continuous fumbles by Mike Rozier. Well, there was no hesitation on the part of Jerry Glanville. He just gave the thumb to Pegram. Get in there. They are moving the ball to the spot where it was fumbled. Instead of where Game the advance should read 144. Game cost should read 144. Thank you. Yeah, Jerry Glanville making a quick decision. Jerry Glanville, a guy who doesn't quite know what to drive to work in the morning. Do I drive my van, my car, my sports car, my motorcycle, my NASCAR? This guy has everything except an airplane and a bicycle, I guess. Well, according to Jerry, he tells us he drag races motorcycles, gets up to about 109 miles and a quarter of a mile. That's kind of remarkable. Third and 11 at the 45-yard line. Here come the Saints, and it's a little oh. step off into unbelievable traffic and intercepted by Sam Mills. Terrible pass. Willie well, might, have, down. Willie might have grabbed the intended receiver as he read the screen coming out. Flag comes in late. Landville said we play like an NBA team. That was a jump ball. Swilling comes from the backside, and the Falcons leave him unblocked, but you guys hit it right on the head at the beginning. What a terrible choice by Chris Miller trying to force that ball in. Prior to the interception, we got personal foul, defense number 56, roughing the quarterback with a shove. Oh, what a huge penalty as that works against New Orleans. Pat Swilling, as I said, was unblocked. He was turned loose by the Falcons intentionally. Let's watch Pat coming from the backside, and they're going to call him for roughing the quarterback. No, I didn't do it. Wow. Well, it didn't look like much of a vicious hit from that angle. Let's look at it again a little bit higher, but it's still from behind. From the left, there's Swilling. I think that he's so vulnerable that that's what draws the flag. He's off balance, looking at the receiver, but again, hardly even touched, and down goes Miller and draws the flag. Boy, that's a... I know we're trying to protect quarterbacks in this league, but that is a borderline call. Still, all of the key calls in this half have gone against the Saints, and it came before the interception, so the interception is nullified. First down at the 30-yard line. Here is Pegram. Gain of two. Stopped by Martin. 1.16 left, and a timeout is taken here. Another look at the roughing the passer. I mean, really, you're, you're only allowed one.
one step before he hit the quarterback, and Frank only looked to be one step. And Beekram is the intended receiver on this, the screen pass, which was read over on the other side, and was actually Ricky Jackson who closed line him coming out of there. But the Saints all over this play. Well, the Saints have had an interception negated by a penalty and a fumble recovery negated by an early whistle. The five foot nine inch Sam Mills, the starter in the Pro Bowl, and boy, you just talk to people over and over and over and talk about what a wonderful tackler Sam Mills is, what an excellent technician he is. When you stop to think in a, in a game dominated by really huge people, to be 5'9", 225, to be playing inside linebacker in the National Football League, I think is, is something in and of itself. To be a Pro Bowl player at that size, that's just that, that's as good as it gets for somebody that size. Second and eight at the 28. 116 to play in the half. Atlanta has two timeouts left. Saints up 10-7. Pritchard in motion. Keep it on the ground. Seagram spin move, tackled at the 28 by Swilling, no gain. Right now they are in position if they don't gain another yard where they could bring Johnson in for a game time 45 or 46 yard field goal. And Atlanta takes a timeout here. They have one remaining. Well, now that was a good play by Pat Swilling who moved inside to an inside linebacker position attacked Houston Hoover, the left guard, and beat him to the inside to make that play. That was that was excellent by Swilling. You know, those of you who might have watched the play the game last week in which Dallas beat Atlanta, you recall that they used Deion Sanders as a wide receiver, and even though he dropped a couple of balls, he was effective. He dropped one that could have been a touchdown. He was taken out of bounds on another. We asked him why he wasn't going to be in there today because he had a rather good preseason working as a wide receiver. And he said, I don't know, that I, I just haven't had to work. They haven't worked me this past week, so I guess I won't be in there. He said, I've been in their face trying to tell them they need me out there, but they haven't worked me. Well, then we asked Jerry Glanville about it, and Glanville says the guy missed mini camp because he's playing baseball. He missed preseason uh, training camp because he's playing baseball. And then uh, he got hurt early in the year, some muscle stuff, and then wasn't able to really get much work at it. Pointed out how complex yeah. it is when you have to read the defense as a receiver to make sure your quarterback knows where you're going. You have to work with the quarterback, and he said he's just not had the time to work at it. Third and eight, rising in motion from the 28. Miller has the first down. Haynes makes the catch. He takes it to the 12-yard line. They have one timeout left, and they utilize it right here with 55 ticks left on the clock. Well, Haynes will get your attention. He runs a 4 2 8 40. Went to the Olympic trials and ran against Carl Lewis in Indianapolis in 1988. So consequently, you get great respect from this youngster who's averaged coming into the game 22 and a half yards per reception. He's a kid who grew up here in New Orleans. He went to high school here. He didn't play high school football. He played in the band. He was a trumpeter. Let me ask you a question here, guys. What do you think about their calling a timeout right there? I mean, they had plenty of time to run up to the ball and run a play and conserve that timeout. Without a timeout, when it comes down to trying to get it stopped to run a field goal, you take away the middle of the field mm -hmm. by not having a timeout at your disposal. I find that to be an interesting call by the Falcons using their final timeout there instead of running to the line of scrimmage. With a lot of time remaining, 55 seconds on the clock. You know, if it's 25 seconds on the clock, then I can see you don't have time to do it. But with almost a minute left, I'd have run up there and mm -hmm. run a play. Mm -hmm. And for Chris Miller, again, keep your eye on number 80, Andre Risen. He is the one that works so well in close. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Pritchard in motion. So three receivers now set to the left. Miller, after looking that way, gets set back at the 28 by Wayne Martin. That is a 14-yard sack. And the clock stops momentarily as they set up, and then Miller downs it to stop the clock with 46 seconds, and that's going to make it third down and 24. And that, this is growth. Oh, uh, Wayne Martin beat the one of the best in the business, Dan. Well, he goes right between Fralick and Hinton. Watch here on the right. Watch Martin split 79 and 75. Fralick turns him loose. Hinton is too far to his outside. Can't block him without holding him and lets him go. You know, that's a situation where 
you don't want to get a holding penalty, but you might as well grab the guy if you're beat that bad. And then, Dan, with 46 seconds, though, you don't have to down it on no. second down no. at 24. And they downed it there. That stops the clock. They still have 46 seconds. You're exactly right, Al. Third and 24. A, a, a total waste of a play, completely. A low throw. The catch is not made. It's incomplete. And then to compound it on third and 24, they run a four-yard pattern. And now they put themselves in position where they, the field goal attempt by Johnson is going to be from about 44 yards. Johnson having a good year, the former Seattle star. His best for the year, 50 yards. And that's several times in his career. 44-yard attempt from 45 or less this season. He's been perfect. 17 and 17. From 44, he tries to tie the game. And he does. So he couldn't find a home in Seattle for 91, but he has really found a home in Atlanta. And the Falcons are used to being pinned down in this building as they were in November, and they came from behind and won that game, and they were down 10-0 in this one, and have tied it 10-10 with 37 seconds remaining in the half. You know, it's interesting, too, for New Orleans fans. They've been ecstatic over the past couple of weeks because of their big victory over the Raiders, 27-0, 27-3 over Phoenix, and and of course Atlanta losing to Dallas they win the division but in the back of their minds they've got to think back to the five games they lost they were leading in those games going into the fourth quarter all five of them they lost four games in a row and coming into the tail end of the season that they were leading going into the fourth quarter so it's kind of an uneasy crowd that sits here today you know we've harped on clock management all year but I mean week after week we see it not only did they take their last time out with 55 seconds burn the play by downing it, but they've left New Orleans with 37 seconds and all three timeouts on the other side. No, you're right. It's, it's, it's something that you would think would be handled better than it is by a lot of teams, but, you know, once again, though, we're, we're kind of removed from the pressure side of it up here, so maybe we're afforded the opportunity of being a little more analytical, but still, they're paid to make those kind of decisions, and a lot of times you see poor decisions made. Fred McAfee will take it out of the end zone. Breaking tackle. Uh, great run back to the 35, and a flag comes in as well. That might be a face mask. That came in late. There are two flags, actually. But they couldn't get McAfee down. He is, he's not that big. He weighs about 192 pounds, and he is powerful. You saw the dismayed Bobby April, who not only gives up a long run back, but more yardage on the penalty. And the question now will be, is this going to be a five-yard or a 15-yard face mask? It's almost inevitable. Five-yard face mask penalty. Back on at the end of the run. First down. Not intentional, but Holman, it's inevitable when you keep your feet, you keep dragging tacklers. Deion Sanders, as he does, customarily going in high, trying to drag him down, got his hand caught in the mask. Unintentional five yards, but it does with the 28 seconds now remaining, as Al pointed out. It gives New Orleans field position to try to look for some more points. Well, Dion is many things, Frank, but he's not a good tackler. He's always up around the shoulder pads. He is not a vicious tackler, and that's the type of thing, as you said, that's what happens. You get the hands high, you're going to find a face mask every now and then. Saints with all their timeouts left, and over the middle, here's Dalton Hillier. Oh. He takes the ball into Atlanta territory, and they're already in field goal range, getting it to the 32 timeout Saints. A beautiful call, a two-man Falcon pass rush. The middle of the field is left wide open. A beautiful call by Carl Smith, the offensive coordinator of the New Orleans Saints. And a safe one, oh, Totally safe, but the key, Atlanta only comes with two people. You see only two guys, and look at that. Jesse Tuggle is left to defend the entire middle of the field against three Saints offensive linemen. Seven defensive backs, one linebacker. No way Tuggle is going to take Hilliard one-on-one. -on -one. No, he's good, not that good. Not if he's got to beat off three Saint linemen to get to him. That's Carl Smith. Good call. 
And Great Al, conservative call. Al, you mentioned about the mistake of leaving them 37 seconds at the end of the first half. Here they are now down to the 33-yard line. And from Wharton Anderson, well, this is not quite chip shot range, but he's a guy who's already kicked one from 60 this year. And one thing Bobby Abair does well, too, guys, and that is protect the ball, protect the opportunity. He will not do it. He's very cool, very collected. He won't gamble. And it would be a rare occasion when he would turn this ball over down here, yeah, even be, though he might try to get seven. It'd be 50 yards from here if they don't get another yard. From the gun. Atlanta nearly jumped, but they got back. No flag. Bear dumps it for Hilliard. Hilliard gets to the 30. Now you're looking at a 47-yard field goal. Timeout with 11 ticks. Mo Gardner with the tackle. The scoreboard still shows that the Saints had three timeouts before that play. I believe they only had two, didn't they? Because Bear took one. Exactly. So I think they're down to one. They now. have one, one right. left. Right. And, and 11 seconds and on the clock. The scoreboard just removed two of those timeouts. Mm -hmm. And that's that. plenty of time, I think, probably to try to work the ball closer for Morton Anderson. He's what? well within range, but do something safe, high percentage, and then call your last timeout and put it through the upright. And Frank, it's exactly the point we were talking about what the Falcons did to themselves by removing them that last timeout. The Saints now can use the entire football field. They don't have to be afraid about going over the middle because they've got that one timeout left. They're not restricted to the outside third of the field where they have to get out of bounds or into the end zone. Where we saw poor clock management on the one hand, we have now seen extremely effective use of the clock and play selection by the by the Saints. Interesting what that screen did a few moments ago. It'll also keep the Atlanta down linemen, and now there are three of them on the field. It'll keep them wary as to a screen, slow down their pass rush, give A. Bear an opportunity to look over receivers. Second and seven at the 30. Four wide receivers. Hilliard adjoins A. Bear in the shotgun. Three-man rush. Over the middle, the catch is made by Carroll. Timeout. He gets to the 18, and now you're looking at about a 35-yard field goal. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's great work, and it all goes back to a youngster, Fred McAfee, that was not on the roster at the beginning of the season. He got the Saints into field position where they could gamble a little bit. They didn't come with a big one. They went with the screenplay, got big yardage out of that, but that was a great series for New Orleans. The calls were perfect, and it was a superb effort by... The youngster Fred McAfee returning that kickoff. Again, the Falcons special teams this year blocking seven kicks, including two field goal attempts. Anderson, as you look at Rozier on the Atlanta sideline, Anderson will kick this one from about the 25-yard line, a 35-yard kick. To try to give New Orleans the halftime lead. Joel Hilgenberg will snap it. Tommy Barnhart will hold it. 35 yards. And New Orleans has the lead. That was pretty to watch. It doesn't take long, does it? Great clock management. The perfect calls, the perfect execution. Well, it all started with a good kickoff return. The rookie McAfee breaking tackles, the extra yardage because of the Deion Sanders penalty, and then Bear guiding them downfield, and an easy field goal for Morton Anderson. We say easy, well, for him, 35 is really easy. Well, what a pretty look that was right there. And Barnhart and Anderson. Don't you love it when kickers... That was, was a dainty. Delicate yeah. headbutt. that was a dainty headbutt. That was a petite headbutt. Petite headbutt. I like that. No, uh, no jeopardy of either one of those guys cracking their helmet of, uh, with that one. No. There he is. Dan mentioned a moment ago the youngster went to Mississippi College, but I'll tell you, he, he gained almost 4,500 yards rushing there. And really didn't pick up the offense during training camp. Showed signs of brilliance, and they kept him around. And I'll tell you, when you gain 4,320 yards or whatever it was, at any level, you are covering a lot of yards. Fine football player. He's going to be around a while, and he's going to be a star. Deion Sanders is back to receive this kick from Morton Anderson. The Majors try to hit a little ground ball because yeah. the clock starts when Atlanta touches it. And you might as well, they flag down. I think the Saints 
Bucks were offside coming across the 35-yard line. So even though time has run out, if the penalty is on the Saints for offside, they'll have to kick again. Are they trying to work that ball back to Sanders in a rugby-like lateral movement? Well, the mistake was by not covering the ball right away because they would have been able to run an offensive play from right exactly. there. You know, and, and let's face it. Offside on the kickoff. Penalized five yards. We've got two seconds on the clock. See, let's be realistic. If the Saints would have covered the ball, I mean, the Falcons would have covered the ball right away, the clock would have stopped in time for them to run an offensive play. And if any team in the league has made effective use of the Hail Mary pass, it's the Falcons. The Falcons. Look at That's those two coaches. You talk about contrast. That's like having Axel Rose on the right and Perry Como on the left. I mean, that's how different these guys are. Jim Moore is a lot different, oh, isn't he? When, then when we talked with him three weeks, two weeks ago before the Raider oh, yeah. game when they were down, had lost four in a row. I like Al, a Axel Rose. Uh, obviously a man who's been to many Guns N' Roses concerts, right, Al? Yeah, I, I can see you in the front row sitting next to Tony Mandarin. Like that. A couple of dozen. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to go, but there was, there was, there was no valet parking. <laughs> <laughs> Axel Rose. You wouldn't know. All right. You wouldn't know Axel Rose if you tripped All over. right, Van Halen. <laughs> Twisted sister. I had a hard time spelling MC Hammer. <laughs> Please, drop the MC. <laughs> Where's Vic Moan when we need him? Where's halftime when we need him? Yeah, it's coming. 13-10 Saints. Folks at home are going, where are some new announcers when we need them? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of them out of work right now. <laughs> and they're all coaches. That's right. NBC is running out of jobs. The halfway house. Play exactly here. What got they got <laughs> throwing it back. If they don't watch it, the Saints could get a touchdown here. <laughs> well, that's quite a way to end it. And as we said at the very top, the Falcons live on the edge. And it sometimes was. it's the edge of oh. disaster. It was planned on the play before. It was sort of an old rugby play. Lateral it out, lateral it out, and get the ball to Sanders, and it didn't work. 13-10 New Orleans at the half. Back we come after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC station. Nice play of this drive coming up. On game day, out on that field, I know that the New Orleans Saints are counting on their quarterback to make them win. As the owner of the Saints, I know we need a quarterback to make us winners in helping our community. That's why we picked the United Way is our community service quarterback. United Way has got the structure, the manpower, and the compassion to make us all winners. After seeing the United Way at work, the Saints organization contributed $50,000 to help solve our most pressing problems. When we see the results and the smiles of these children at this United Way Child Care Center, we realize that these kids need us today. And I know we'll need them tomorrow. The United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. Yay! This message furnished by the National Football League. Yo, what's up? Look, ABC had their own idea about what Sinbad and Friends should be like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I'll be hanging with some of my homies doing my own thing. Heavy D, Bobby McFerrin, and even James Brown's mama gonna be in the place. It's gonna be a fresh night of comedy and music on Sinbad and Friends. Tonight, that's right, tonight. See you At 8, 7 Central. The traction control system of the Lexus LS400 helps reduce tire spin across rain, sleet, snow, even an occasional patch of ice. Hey, I hear the Ford dealers have 2.9% financing on that new F-150 pickup truck they have. Yeah, some guy at first tried to trade in his old beater. It's powered by eight ring gear, all highway miles, and it runs on alfalfa. Right now, your Ford dealer is offering 2.9 financing or $1,500 cash back on 1992 Ford F-150s. 2.9 financing or $1,500 cash back on F-150. Offer ends January 3rd.
Hey, uh, when does this offer expire? About three days after I do, so hurry it up. The Commish, tonight at 9, only on Channel 7. The Lexus Halftime Report. Brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles. The result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. Here now, Frank Gifford. Back in the Superdome, we're at halftime, and it is New Orleans over Atlanta, 13 to 10. Earlier, if you were with us, you saw Kansas City defeat the Raiders, 10 to 6, in the very first playoff game. And let's go back now to Kansas City. Our colleagues Brent Musburger and Dick Vermeil, guys. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs eliminate the Los Angeles Raiders, but Dick, it wasn't easy. It was not easy. Kansas City held the ball for 11 minutes in the first quarter and comes up short. They missed the field goal. Would you believe that Nick Lowry, one of the most successful kickers of all time, misfired in his first two, did hit a huge one down the stretch to make the final 10-6. to six. There were indications early on that young Todd Marinovich would have a tough day. This ball turned over as the fumble was forced by the Chiefs. He would later throw four interceptions. This the only touchdown of the game. Freddie Jones, a play-action pass to the back to the end zone behind the safety. He's knocked out, but ruled inbounds for the catch. Now, you think the Raiders should have just kept giving the ball to Nick Bell in the second half. He was impressive. You know, he had 10 carries for 65 yards there at one time in the ball game. Keep giving the guy the ball. He can run. Now, the Kansas City defense started losing one player after another. The most important was the absence of Derek Thomas, who went to a hospital because of an accelerated heart rate. And here is his replacement, Lonnie Mortz, forcing a turnover. He would later intercept the pass, and afterwards, he spoke to Lynn Swan. There was some big defensive play in the game, maybe none bigger than the last interception of the ball game. Lonnie, terrific play on your part. Well, I, I just, I'm just glad I caught the ball and was able to run with it. Uh, Mervin Fernandez I think, uh, tipped the ball up in the air, and I ran behind him to tackle him. Next thing I knew, I had the ball running, and people were trying to tackle me. So, I mean, it, it just came to me. The defensive unit, did you feel you had to win this ball game on your side of the ball? Yes, we did. I, I felt like if I didn't step it up, I'd be a deficiency to the defense. So uh, I tried to play my best game, and, you know, I'm just hoping that it was my best game, and I can keep it up. For a while, it looked like it was going to be a Kansas City graveyard out there. You had player after player coming off the field. What was going through everyone's mind? Play tough, hang in there, you know, play with injuries, play hurt, do whatever you can. we got to win this one. It's, it's on us. we got to win it because the offense is run, run the time off the clock, but defense has to win championships. Now, you act like it was just one of those fortunate circumstances where you're in the right place at the right time for the interception. But on the fumble, it was obvious you went in and caused it. Right. I, I went in to uh, tackle him low, and when I saw the ball, he was carrying the ball out away from his body, and we were always taught strip at the ball, so I stripped the ball and came out. It was a great play. Okay, good luck, and down the road the rest of the playoffs. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. The Chiefs move along, and we'll continue with our halftime activities from New Orleans in just a moment. The Lexus LS400 is equipped with a very sophisticated suspension system, which makes it seem like it's riding on rails, even when it's not. Day, the best is here. It all begins with the 103rd Tournament of Roses Parade. Then our Bull Fest triple header kicks off as ACC champ Clemson meets California in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Followed by the matchup you've been waiting for in the granddaddy of them all. The undefeated Washington Huskies make their claim for the national title as they tackle Big Ten champ Michigan in the Rose Bowl. And that night, number three Florida takes on Notre Dame in the U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl. Two years day's biggest games are on ABC Sports. Halftime, Superdome in New Orleans. The New Orleans Saints over the Atlanta Falcons, 13 to 10, and kind of a strange game, guys. Uh, Frank Gibbler, Val Michaels, and Dan Deerdorf. Uh, some funny things led up to the happening, particularly on that first, uh, the first touchdown play, a completely blown defense on the part of Atlanta. It's sort of similar, though, to the regular season game. I think we're going to be set up for a wild finish as we take a look at some of the highlights. New Orleans gets on the board first. 
Turner wide open over the middle, takes that pass from Bear. That made it 7-0. They eventually made it 10-0, and then a huge break for Atlanta because clearly Mike Rozier fumbles, but the play was ruled dead as his knee apparently in the estimation of the official was down. The play was over. Atlanta was then able to take advantage of it because Andre Risen on the very next play springs free over the middle, scores this touchdown to make the score 10 to 7. That was not the only big break the Atlanta Falcons got because Chris Miller here late in the first half appears to have this terrible pass intercepted, but instead what happens is Pat Swilling on a very dubious call gets called for roughing the passer and here is how dubious it is. Atlanta is able to keep the ball. They eventually tie the game 10-10, but then because of clock mismanagement, they leave time for New Orleans at the end to set up a Morton Anderson field goal, 13-10. A great first half, though, Dan. Well, have plenty to talk about, that's for sure. And I think when we look at the second half, I think for the Falcons, Chris Miller, to me, didn't seem to be making very good decisions in the first half. I mean, he was throwing into double coverage. Uh, we saw the interception that was taken back because of that call on Swilling. I think of the Falcons, they're doing a good job, I think, controlling the line of scrimmage. I think from the quarterback standpoint, they need to be maybe throwing to someone on the other side of the field, taking a look across the field, maybe going from number one to number two to number three and throwing it to him. You know, and I've noticed Atlanta's not been the wild defensive team they've been in the past. They've got to get back to playing Atlanta football. We'll be back with more action. Second half coming up from the Superdome in New Orleans in a moment. The Lexus LS400 has an extremely effective electronic security system. While it may look rather simple to you, to a car thief, it looks something like this. The Lexus Halftime Report has been brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. We'll be back with the second half after this message and a word from our ABC station. The traction control system of the Lexus LS400 helps reduce tire spin across rain, sleet, snow, even an occasional patch of ice. Sunday, Stanley Kubrick's Restored Classic. I'm not Arthur Glory. I'm Arthur Spartacus. With footage never before seen on television. When just one man says, no, I won't, Rome begins to fear. A network television premiere starring Kirk Douglas, Laurence Olivier, Gene Simmons, Charles Lawton, Peter Ustinov, Woody Strode, and Tony Curtis. Beginning Sunday at 9, 8 Central, Spartacus. I love CDs. CDs? Yeah, I'm always buying CDs. CDs are it. Yeah, we just bought some CDs. Tapen? Yeah, that's a problem. Right in the middle of the best gem in the album. The tapes just aren't the right length. It cuts off. The tapes are either too long or too short. <laughs> Finished. Total bummer. Sony CD it. Audio cassette. Sony CD it. Ideal length for recording CDs. 54 minutes, 74 minutes, 94 minutes, 100 minutes. Comes in different lengths. Awesome. I'd buy that. So I guess my CDs have met their match. Why wouldn't you buy it? How long have you been here? Well, Santa, what are you doing here? Well, my job's done for this year. Now it's time for my present. Besides, the old reindeer are getting a little tired. Time to trade them. Right now, your Ford dealer has 2.9% financing for 48 months on every new Ford Escort. That's right, 2.9% financing on Escort. This offer ends January 3rd, so see your Ford dealer today. Well, one thing for sure, I would have to stop every two miles of Venus. Get the laugh track and the long shot tonight. NFC Wild Card Playoff Game. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Advil. In tablets or caplets, Advil, advanced medicine for pain. The 
Superdome in New Orleans. I played a Pro Bowl game here one time in 1976, and Ray Guy I called kicked, the game. kicked the ball <laughs> into that screen up there, hanging over the field. I couldn't here. believe it. We did no. call the game. We had it on uh, as part of Monday Night Football package, and I, nobody could believe it. Well, we were both there then, huh, Frank? Yeah. But none of us could believe it. And we couldn't check, believe this either last night. Check this out. This was the room service for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> if you like to eat, this is a pretty good spot. Nolan, Nolan. Big easy. easy. What they call it? 13 to 10 yeah. is our halftime score with the Saints on top. And here are the numbers through the first 30 minutes of play. You can see the Falcons have improved a little bit their time of possession deficit. Have gobbled up some yards at one point in time there. Well into the first quarter, they had nothing. And three tour turnovers so far in this ball game, and there could have been more. A couple were negated. Gordon Anderson begins the second half by kicking to the one-yard line. Deion Sanders can only bring it out to the 16-yard line. Where he's tackled by Frank Wainwright, number 87. And uh, Jordan blocking on the play. Slow to get up, and that could be a, uh, a big loss for the Atlanta Falcons. He is their starting strong safety. Man who blitzes a lot. He integral actually, part of the defense. He actually gets hit, I think, on his right knee by Sanders. Hyperextended yeah. the right knee, and that's what they're going to look at. He's trying to make a block, and as Deion Sanders is trying to make something happen, he actually hits the right leg of Brian Jordan. Let's see if we can find it here. T take a look at it. You see this right here, this is Jordan, and Sanders is going to come knifing in here in this direction, and watch how he's going to hit him right on the right knee. He'll plant his right foot, and there it is. And you can see how it kind of caught the ankle at an awkward angle. It caught the knee and pushed it back a little bit. Oh, there's perfect look at the way that knee flexes out. And Brian Jordan is walking over to the Falcon sideline, and he wasn't very far from being carried over to the sideline. That was almost a catastrophe for Mr. Jordan. That thing is going to stiffen up and get sore. I can guarantee that. Atlanta at its own 16. They begin with Eric Pegram, the rookie from West Texas State in the backfield. Miller sends Ryzen in motion. And it's Pegram. Up to the 20-yard line. The rookie picks up four. Frank Warren, 73, makes the tackle for the Saints. It looks like Jamie Dukes, the center, is hurt. He landed awkwardly. Mm -hmm. Nice he's job. Back up his guy, Bingham. I think the pile fell on him. I think he was out in front trying to make a block, and it's one of those deals where the, the pile catches up with you. The, the collection of, of humanity is uh, kind of eats you up, and that's what happened to Dukes that time. Bingham remains on the sideline. Mike Ruther, another guy who can snap the ball, for the moment has come on. Ruther has been used even at the tight end position, but again, in just two plays, Atlanta hurt by the loss of Brian Jordan. I think you'd, you'd probably not see him again. Ruther is a USFL guy that, is, that has been around, was in Denver, was in Phoenix for a while. Take a look, there's Dukes on the left side, and he's blocking on Sam Mills, and here come the tacklers, here comes the ball carrier, and you can see his right leg gets caught in there. He does get it out in time, but obviously some damage was inflicted before he did. He is uh, assisted to the sidelines there. Well, what you have to worry now, if you're with the Atlanta Falcons, is the snap count, the exchange between the center and the quarterback is so critical. And when you don't get the reps during the week, as Jamie Duke would probably take all the reps during the course of the week as they practice offensively and now all of a sudden you get a change at that critical spot is that everyone is in tune everyone on the right page and one of the problems Miller has had back in his career has been handling snaps second down and six from the 20 yard line Throwing, find 
finds the open man, Ryzen. And he goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line, and that's a first down. Well, if the Falcons win this game, Frank, uh, Chris Miller ought to take his offensive lineman out for a hearty dinner. They are giving him some time to find receivers. Take a look at Ryzen again, Pro Bowl Bama. You're so right now. Miller has a lot of time. This takes a lot of time to get this pass off. Crossing far over from the left side, breaking across so he clears the linebackers, and Miller had to wait, had to wait, had to get the protection, and he got it in there. And they continue Jerry. to work on Duke. Yeah, there's Jerry Ray, the trainer of the Falcons, working on Jamie Duke, trying to put all Humpty's pieces back together again. From the 38 on first down, Miller is going to take off with it. And he is out of bounds, a little short of the first down as he gets up to the 47-yard line. Again, tremendous work up front by this Falcon offensive line. And it seems the longer we get into this game, the more they're beginning to assert themselves against a tremendous defense. And there's Mike Ken, who is just having Pat Swilling for lunch. Swilling's going to try a spin back to the inside. Ken stays right with him, goes right with him, collapses him, and when he tries to spin again, I mean, and that's what, that's what allows Miller to get to that side. When Swilling spins to the inside, there's no containment on that side. You know, Dan, I'm really surprised they haven't started doing stunts with the inside-outside man in New Orleans because they've been doing a number on both Swilling and Jackson. Second and one. Here's Seagram exploiting the hole, getting into New Orleans territory, taking it to the 43. And that is a first down. Let's update a situation in Kansas City. If you watch that game, the great linebacker Derek Thomas was taken to the hospital at halftime with an accelerated heartbeat. It's our understanding that the heartbeat had decelerated by the time he left the stadium. He is in the hospital, but the word is very good. According to Bob Moore of the Chiefs front office, everything is okay. He may be released, or they may keep him in just for a a precautionary measure, but they do expect him to play next week. And here's Duke back in the game for the Falcons. And Ricky Jackson is inciting the crowd here in the Superdome, asking them to get into it. From the 43, Miller again avoids the sack. And nimbly picks up the first down. Well, that there was a failure of the Saints inside guys to make a play because Ricky Jackson collapsed the pocket forced Miller up, and there was nobody inside to make the play. Jackson did everything he could do. Watch him here against Chris Hinton. He's going to get around the corner. Miller sees him and has to get away from it, but there's nobody inside. Fralick <laughs> just dispatches Wayne Martin there, and Chris, Chris Miller is doing really what he's capable of doing, running with the ball once to the left, once to the right, both for first down. Two down lineman for New Orleans from the 32-yard line. Pegram goes nowhere to the second and 10 with 11.45 to go in the third. And the Saints on top, 13 to 10. Jackson and Mitzi in on the tackle. Could have been a change at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Jackson again on the stop. But there are two down linemen in and three linebackers and the rest are defensive backs. And here's Pegram trying to get to the outside. And Jackson was right there and he gets uh, a lot of help. Some guys wave at the crowd and then have a running back run by them. Some guys wave at the crowd, ask them to get into it, and then take the situation into their own hands. That's what Ricky Jackson does. A lot more than talk with this guy. Lots of action. Second and 10 at the 32. Blitz. Pritchard has it over the middle. Pritchard takes it down to the 20. Atkins was coming from the outside, opening over the middle, and it's exploited by Miller to Pritchard for a first down at the 20. Oh, and a good read by Chris Miller to Mike Pritchard. The blitz was coming. Two down linemen. They picked them up. They picked up the linebackers, and they were right in sync, Pritchard and Miller. Last four meetings here, as you can see, all of them close, including the overtime game won by the Falcons in November. We appear to be headed in that same direction right now. Falcons have nudged the ball inside the 20. Opening drive of the second half. Saints on top, 13 to 10. First down at the 20. Miller avoids Jackson and throws. It's juggled and it is caught by Jason Phillips. 
Ooh, I didn't think he had it from this angle over here before he went out of bounds. Guaranteed second look at this one. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a, another look at this with the replay. Did he have the both feet inbound? Now, where's Jason Phillips, the five foot seven receiver, plan B player out of Detroit. And Miller chased out of the pocket. And way inside with Wayne Martin. He has the luxury of time, fires it. Now he's bobbling it right here. When does he put it away? Does he get the right foot down? I don't think that's a move. I don't think they'll bring that back. back. I think they'll overturn that. Jack Petty is the replay official. No one had a better look at it than Drake Landfield. He was standing right on the sideline. I don't think that's a catch. Ruling on the play as a completed pass. Last play is under review. Yes, as well it should be. And I'll be very surprised if it isn't overturned. And quickly. Again, one more look at Jason Phillips. He does not have control of the ball. There he has control of the ball. The left is down. The right is out of bounds. I, I think that's very decisive. And very conclusive. Well, one of the things about being a... After further review, we've got a reversal. Yeah. Incomplete Let's watch another part of the play. Let's watch two old pros go at it and two pro bowlers, Bill Fralick and Ricky Jackson. Watch Fralick 79. He's working against Ricky Jackson. Here comes Jackson to the inside. Fralick <laughs> is locked up with another guy and he kicks out his left leg and tricks Ricky Jackson. That is a penalty. You are not allowed to trip another player. Have that you ever is done also that? real smart. Did you ever do that? All the time. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, darn right, because it's almost impossible for an official to see it. Second and ten at the 20-yard line. Lost it. Into the end zone for Haynes, and it is a touchdown. Michael Haynes. Michael Haynes with the great speed. He doesn't look like he is moving as rapidly as he is. He's a 4-2-9 sprinter, great 100-meter sprinter. Olympic trials in 88, and he just blew by Reginald Jones. It's a beautifully thrown timing pass by Chris Miller. That's Jones right up in his face. He's going to have help to the inside, but he tries to play him a little bump and run here. And that ball thrown in there perfect. There's the help getting over there in the form of 29, Vincey Glenn. Glenn was late, and Reginald Jones was just did not stay with the speedy Michael Haynes. But what a great job by Haynes of holding on to the ball and taking that hit by Glenn, because if that ball would have come out, that would not have been a catch. He's got to come down and demonstrate possession. That was just superlative on the part of Michael Haynes, who helped slay the Saints during the regular season with a couple of big plays. And right now, he has given Atlanta the lead. Washington meets Michigan in the Rose Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC Sports. Just when we started winning, I ended up wrenching my knee. For pain as bad as this, I used to take aspirin or Tylenol. But today, I take Advil. When my body really aches, Advil is my first choice. You know, doctors recommend Advil most for sprains and strains. Advil relieves my pain, yet it's gentler to my stomach than aspirin. Okay. For me, Advil is the way to go. Advil, tablets and caplets, advanced medicine for pain. Ford trucks, the best ever Ford trucks. First compact truck in America was an import, remember? Uh-huh. And then along came Ford Ranger, now the best-selling compact pickup five years running. Ranger offers four-liter power, push-button four-wheel drive. Technology the imports can't match. Mm-hmm. So who sent who back to the drawing board this time? More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. I have Denerex on this side. As soon as I put Denerex on my hair, I felt like the itch was going away. What does the Denerex tingle tell you? The tingle feels like it's taking away the dandruff. Extra-strength Denerex with conditioners has strong medicine to fight dandruff and its itch, plus conditioners to leave hair healthy-looking and manageable. The Denerex tingle tells me it works, and I see that it works. I have no dandruff, and I have no itch. Denerex with conditioners, the dandruff shampoo you can feel working. Here's Chris Miller, and at this moment, Michael Haynes is even with Reggie Jones, the cornerback, and now he blows by Miller with a great shot. Now watch the blow by Vincey Glenn, and 
for the receiver. He knows he's going to get hit. That was a great effort on the part of Haynes to hold on to it, but he knew he was going to get hit. Once that ball was in there, he just touched it to the chest, took the shot, and he's a little woozy on the sideline. Storm Johnson kicks off. A bouncer down in the end zone by McAfee. And we have 9.52 remaining in the third quarter with the Falcons on top by four. Oliver Stone really has a lot of guts to say what a lot of people have felt for many, many years. The most talked about movie in America is JFK. I thought it was awesome. I think it was the, the best movie I've seen all year. Powerful. Compelling. Riveting. Provocative. It was absolutely incredible. I'm pretty speechless. Some of the best movie making I've seen. And I think it will go down in history uh, as a major film. Kevin Costner in an Oliver Stone film. This is absolutely phenomenal. JFK, rated R, now playing. My dad had ulcers, so when my stomach started acting up, I was afraid to go to the doctor. But finally, I went. <laughs> was I relieved when my doctor said my lanta? He said it was indigestion, not an ulcer, and my kind of indigestion called for a strong medicine. My lanta is strong medicine, strongly recommended. In fact, my lanta is the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said my lanta. How do you change the best-built full-size pickup in America? You painstakingly reshape the exterior until it's more refined. Make the instrument panel more user-friendly. The available power controls easier to reach. And you redesign the interior for unexpected comfort. The best ever rest! How did we change the full-size Ford pickup? Very carefully. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. It matters where you get your news. Now. From the world headquarters of ABC News overnight. Watch ABC's World News Now, beginning January 6th. When you think of great receiving combinations in the NFL, coming to mind, of course, Rice and Taylor in San Francisco, Cooper and Clayton in Miami, and now that Atlanta is finally getting a chance to appear in games, national telecasts, playoff games, Haynes and Ryzen keep them in mind and these two are babies i mean they are just kids they're going to be on this scene for a long time but well, they complement each other first down from the 20 yard line as mcafee takes it out to the 24th this is the first time the saints have had the ball in the second half mo gardner makes the tackle we have 9 40 remaining in the third quarter if atlanta wins they will go to washington next week because atlanta would be the sixth and final seed in the playoffs in the NFC. If the Saints win as the third seed, they would go to Detroit next week. Detroit is the words, second seed. Last words we have from Jerry Glanville. I'll see him at RFK Stadium. I'll leave tickets for you. Mm -hmm. He said we'll take them. Second and six in the 24. I doubt Glanville can get tickets at RFK. <laughs> Only for Elvis. Here's McAfee again, and he picks up three. Gets it out to the 27-yard line, and that's going to set up a third and three, Tim Green is at the Green. bottom of the pile. Well, they're not uh, going to win a spelling bee, I know that. Well, all you kids out there, uh, don't pay attention to the middle of that. For anyone who might not know, that's a reference to the fact that Jerry Glanville over the years has left tickets for a lot of screens of dudes. Of course, he makes sure everyone knows about it, and for a long time, he left tickets for Elvis. He is something. Third and three at the 27-yard line. A bear. And he hits Wesley Carroll, and the rookie having a big day. Takes it to the 39-yard line, and a Saint first down. There's a Saint regular. That guy is uh, Mardi Gras all year round. That's a good uh, pass by Bobby A. Bear. Good conservative across the middle, keep a drive alive type of pass. And uh, it is time for the Saints, who haven't played offense for a long time, to run a little clock. Go ahead, chew up some yardage, get some points out of this drive if they can, but their defense was on the field for a long time. They excel at using the clock. They're always up near the top of the league in time of possession. Hey, they're on first down by time. Throws, and the pass is incomplete. Went early, had it, couldn't hold on. It might have been tipped at second down. Now, oh, boy, did Deion Sanders have a chance to pull the trigger on Quinn early. <laughs> he's, 
Dion will He'll play let it go. He'll play to be around here another day. Yeah. Dion, I think, takes the uh, takes the attitude that uh, I'm not a Clydesdale. You're not going to see me pulling a wagon. A great football player, Dion Sanders. I don't think I've ever seen one that quick. You'll see the shot that he could have taken on Quinn early. Ah, no, no, guys, all right. <laughs> I'll pass that one up. That's Floyd Turner now lining up in the backfield, number 88. They send him in motion as the play clock ticks down. A bear on second and 10. Throws, and it's a beautiful pass uh -huh. caught by Turner just before he goes out of bounds. First down. And A bear released it just before he went down. He threw that ball. Turner hadn't even looked back when he released it. He had to throw the ball. Had to get rid of it. And I don't, I'm don't. i sure he didn't see it caught. That's another blitzing opportunity. There comes Scott Case. Jesse Tuggle comes on the blitz as well. And the Saints make the adjustment. It is just tremendous pressure on the cornerbacks and all the guys in the secondary when you're going to blitz and blitz as much as the Falcons do. If the receivers and the quarterbacks are in sync. You're going to see a lot of big plays against them. First and ten at the Atlanta 47-yard line. Here's Dalton Hilliard. Gain of three to the 44 as the clock ticks down to seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Falcons on top 17-13. What did Jerry Glanville say in that first game when we got beat 27 to 6? We played normal football. We didn't play our kind of football. In the second game, when we won in overtime, 23 to 20, we played Falcon football. If they blocked with five, we brought six. If they blocked six, we brought seven. And we have not really seen that today. They have not been outrageous in coming with the blitz. They use, use the blitz very judiciously, and probably because New Orleans throws high percentage stuff, and they can really get killed when they do blitz. Second and seven from the 44. to the 41-yard line. That's McIyre coming up to make the tackle. Four yards short of the first down, and McIyre yet to arrive. Oh, and that was our friend Mr. Tuggle that came all the way over there and put a pretty good shot on the ball carrier. Ryzen was low. Tuggle was high. I mean, uh, McIyre was low. Tuggle might have got Tuggle McIyre. was high. Tuggle was, came across to put the hit on. He might have got McIyre. 22 is McIyre, and he stays on the carpet. There was a time when aerodynamic design and agile handling would have been unheard of in a car this roomy. A time when a V8 that's more powerful and more efficient would have been simply inconceivable. But that was then, and this is now. The new Ford Crown Victoria. Have you ever wished the traditional could become the exceptional? Have you driven a Ford lately? When it comes to making batteries that last, somebody's in high gear. Today's Duracell batteries can even outperform the ones we made just a few years back. You can't top the Comfort Top. The most entertaining and exciting American movie of the year is Bugsy, says New York Magazine. Did you think you could steal from me? Baby and Benning tear up the screen. Bugsy, rated R, now playing at a theater near you. She'll be crushed. But I need my space, my freedom. Ah, uh, just tell her. Bob, I think we should see other people. What? Why don't you know what you've got till it's gone? But we're so perfect. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down. She'll be back to drink life, yet satisfied completely. So while love isn't easy... I'll give you one more chance. Refreshment is... The excitement, the action, and the mood. From the field to the stands, the fun of the World League returns in March on ABC Sports. Ken McIyer helped off the field. No stranger, of course, to postseason play with the 49ers and then with the Dolphins and now with the Falcons. Bobby Butler spells him at third down and four. And it's a first down as Quinn Early makes the catch and takes it to the 33. Early, the plan B pickup from San Diego, tackled by Butler. It'll take long to go right at Bobby Butler. Butler had some great years as a starter. First round draft pick, one of 
13 that started out on the roster, only 11 now, first round picks that are active on this roster, but Butler, Butler's best years are behind him, although he plays a fine nickel and dime for the Atlanta Falcons and a big contributor, but if you get him isolated out there, you can beat him, and that's exactly what New Orleans will probably try to do. Double slot to the left on first down from the 33. Now they send the tight end tight in motion. The fake to Hilliard, and look out, and for the first time today, A. Bear gets sacked. Big number 99. Well, we say big. He's really an undersized defensive end, but he looked pretty big to A. Bear right there, Tim Green. Boy, he just sniped right across the middle on a stunt. Crosses the face of Joel Hilgenberg, the center. That is freeze stuff that they're putting on the back of Tim McCarr. That's liquid cold, and he's trying to deaden the area. Look at Tim Green, 99, slice to the left. Boy, and Abair just has absolutely no place to go. An unavoidable sack and the first major blow in the middle by the New Orleans offensive line. Tim Green just swarms Bobby Abair in a big play, too, that pushes him well back beyond the 40. Second and 18 from the 41, and they just get the play off. Abair over the middle into traffic, and Martin pays the price as he gets knocked down by Tuggle and Tippin. And it will be third down and 12 coming up. Well, you hit right on the head, Al. Martin has paid the price for five straight years. He works inside. Maybe he's not as gifted as some of the great receivers in the league, but he will catch the football knowing full well he's going to take a hammering and a pounding. And he knew exactly what was going to happen there. Good effort. Spots the ball at the 34. Third and 12 for the Saints. A bear from the gun. Bobby to throw. They have to get to the 23 to convert. And they do on the catch at the 22 by Quinn Early. Oh, what a great acquisition Quinn Early has turned out to be. Plan B from San Diego and Bobby A bear splitting. Defenders firing it in right in front of Bobby Butler, and Bobby's going to be a busy defensive back for the rest of this game. They're going to look for him. No question about that. Boy, he got popped right in the face by Brian Mitchell, the Falcon defensive back, and early obviously hurt as he heads for the bench. But again, another good example. We saw Michael Haynes do it in the end zone with a touchdown. There we saw at that time a receiver taking a great shot and holding on to the ball. Roy Turner in motion. Nothing doing through the middle for Hilliard, who picks up just one, taking it to the 21 with three minutes remaining in the third quarter. And they continue to work on Tim McKayer. And now it looks like McKayer's cramping up. As, well, they're going to try to stretch out that, that hip lower back area that that's, looks to be in some sort of spasms right now. Well, anyone who's ever had a lower back problem knows exactly what they're doing. Yeah, that's the one that you loosen up with every morning if you live with one. And meanwhile, they're trying to check area codes with Quinn Early. Second and nine of the 21. Falcons ahead, 17-13, late third quarter. Bear just dumps it off, and it's incomplete. And Bear goes down, and a flag goes down well after the play. Um, well after the play is exactly right. So Abair very slow getting up, but still in pain. Howard Rowe refereeing his first postseason game. to talk to the referee. He wants Howard Rowe to come over, and Abair is incensed as well. Again, the rule qu uh, states quite simply, if the quarterback throws the football with the intent of avoiding a sack, and Jim Moore can ask all he wants, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he's going to get an audience with Howard Rowe. Abair was pointing at Brenner, but Brenner is clearly in pass protection here. And you know what? It's hard to argue with the call. Bobby Abair was going to be sacked, and he dumped the football, and that is the rule. And if the referee chooses 
to interpret it literally, the flag has to be thrown. There was no receiver in the area. It was a good call. Third and 18 at the 31-yard line. Four-man rush. A bear fires to the 20, and it's just got that arm in there a little early. Watch his left arm as he comes in. There's no question about this one either. He cannot make contact. Fighting through the receiver to the ball. And watch the left arm. He's got it raped around him before the ball ever gets in. Well, and it's not only his arm, but it appeared that his chest and torso with, had made contact well before the ball got there. Again, that's a great effort on the part of Abair. Lost in the call and the flag and the penalty is the fact that Abair defensive pass interference, first down. Yeah, the pass rush was all over him. It still managed to get rid of the ball. That was a much better look at it right there, where you can see the body contact made by Bit Mitchell on Martin. So back-to-back -back penalties, one on the Saints, then the follow-up on the Falcons, pretty much have evened things out. It turns a third and 18 into a first and 10 at the 19. 221 remaining in the third quarter. Atlanta on top, 17-13. And Jim Moore appears to be aging before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. Playoff football will do that to you. On first and 10, long count by Bear. Play clock is down to two. Oh, he changed it. Hilliard, and he gets wrestled down by King Kiffin for a loss back at the 22-yard line, a loss of three. You know, Al, a lot of people don't understand how valuable a Deion Sanders is. That was a change-off to a fade route to Eric Martin. Deion Sanders was all over Martin. Hebert couldn't go into the end zone with it, had to dump it off, and so there's a loss of two yards, and it could really be credited to Deion Sanders. He had perfect coverage on Eric Martin, and that's where Hebert wanted to go. Yeah, I've come full cycle on him three years ago. You just really wondered when we watched him at Florida State in their game against Auburn that he has turned into a great cornerback. Second and 12. Each team's had the ball just once in this quarter. Here's McAfee who runs oh. right through Donaldson and takes it down to the 13-yard line where it's going to be third and five with a minute and a half to play in the period. Boy, the big boys came to play today, didn't they? Mm. I mean, these are two teams that aren't shy about contact, and they appear to be reveling in it here this afternoon. Watch the power of McAfee. Donaldson makes a mistake, tries to take him high, and McAfee just goes right through Jeff Donaldson. And these guys, as we used to say, are poking and stroking. They are, they are hammering each other. McKayer's back in. Quinn Early is back in. It's gorgeous at the moment. I tell you, there's no tomorrow. If you can drag it out there, you drag it out. Third and five. A bear. Lossing one, and it is oh. incomplete. Turner almost came up with it. McKayer with the coverage. They went right to McKayer. I really wonder if they knew that Bobby Butler had gone out of the lineup. They came over with the fade pass, and it was perfectly covered by McKayer. Yeah, but McKayer has been on the sidelines. Uh, nursing that bad back, so what better way to find out if he's all the way back into it? Well, he played it well. Sure did. And even then, it was almost caught by Turner. 31-yard field goal attempt for Morton Anderson. Barnhart to hold. So spotted at the 21-yard line. Atlanta jumps, flags are down, there's no play. Watch out, because if Tuggle Jesse Tuggle was across the line. This will be a New Orleans first down. Very close to it. Or real good. They appear to be about exactly five yards from a first down. They usually use that yard marker fairly accurate, and it looks like it would be a first down if it's five against Atlanta. Prior to the snap, we've got contact and encroachment number yeah. 58 feet well, it's a five-yard penalty. It might be enough for a first down. By the way, they are not taking any points off the board. There was no play. This play was over before Anderson ever kicked it. You see, the key was when you heard Howard Rose say, contact before the snap. That means, just as Al said, it never existed. 
but the spotting of this football now is going to be crucial and it is a New Orleans first down what a huge mistake and what a by ball, the Falcons Jerry Glanville he started out as a special teams coach wherever he was the special teams provided a lot of the emphasis for winning and they've been good this year but they've made a couple of major errors today and there is a big time there as Bobby Abram or April rather the special teams coach obviously concerned first and goal just inside the nine 41 seconds left in the third Falcons up by four McAfee behind George takes it to the four yard line stopped by Huggles no greater incentive than to be the guy who made a mistake no use keeping your head down. Come back and make a play. And that's what Jesse Tuggle does right here. Look at the pursuit. Has to go around his own man. Gives some ground. But then still musters up enough to get in there on McAfee. And yeah, that's still good running by McAfee. He gets almost four yards out of it. Yeah, Tuggle had to give some ground to get around Tippins, but still makes the play. End of the third quarter. This one has been a beauty. Atlanta 17, New Orleans 13 will return with our wild card playoff game after this word from our ABC station. Saturday, a cat in a cage, a nun with a gun. Have you seen anything like that? And a lady in love. When I'm around you, I feel things. Make it an exciting holiday weekend. Good luck, boys. With an all-new Young Writers, Saturday at 9, 8 Central. I'm Sam Donaldson, wishing you all the best this holiday season. From our family at prime time to yours, best wishes for happy holidays. Visit the wonderful world of Electec and you'll understand why we're Chicago's computer wonderland. Our stores offer service, support, and incredible prices on products such as the fabulous family of Hewlett Packard laser jet printers. Featuring state-of-the-art technology, Hewlett Packard laser jets offer an unmatched level of printer performance and reliability. The ideal choice for every printing need. For your desk or your entire company, when you need laser printers, think Hewlett Packard. For thousands of fine computer products, visit Electec, Chicago's own computer wonderland. How long have you been here? Well, Santa, what are you doing here? Well, my job's done for this year. Now it's time for my presents. Besides, the old reindeer are getting a little tired. Time to trade them. Right now, your Ford dealer has 2.9% financing for 48 months on every new Ford Escort. That's right, 2.9% financing on Escort. This offer ends January 3rd, so see your Ford dealer today. Well, one thing for sure, I would have to stop every two miles to feed it. Neil Anderson on Sports Finals Sunday after Eyewitness News. This has been almost a 10-minute drive to this point for the Saints. Atlanta took the ball to start the third quarter, scored. The Saints had the ball for the rest of the period. As we start the fourth quarter, it is second and goal for the Saints at the Atlanta three-yard line. Falcons on top, 17 to 13. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. 15 minutes left in regulation. Hobie Brenner hasn't been a part of this game yet. Good spot for your tight end. On second and goal, McAfee takes it down to the one. Tough runner, Scott Case makes the tackle. Again, he's not that big. 190 pounder, 5'10". He runs like a much bigger man. In the second game, it led to the old overtime win by Atlanta. He made a key fumble. And they came right back with the rookie. And he's been their main man in the running game. Third and goal at the one. Dawson Hilliard is in the backfield. With Jordan offset. Tight in motion. They give it to Hilliard.
If you've never been to a pro football game, this is why people are in the seats. Because it's fun to be in a place like this when your team's winning. And that's what that touchdown by Dalton Hilliard did for the Saints of New Orleans. Gave him a two-point lead. Hilliard takes it in. He had a 65-yard touchdown in the first Atlanta game. Gets a big one here. Anderson to the point after. Make it a three-point lead. They're in their seats, and they're out of their seats. They're standing at the Superdome. The Saints have never won a postseason game. They lead by three. Look, we already make the world's best-selling trucks, mm -hmm. but we made our 92 Ford full-size pickup even better with a new design, new interior, new instrument panel, new available power lumbar seats. But there's one thing that'll never change. It's still built Ford Tough. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. Fortunately, my heart attack wasn't the end of the world. It was kind of the beginning. To help prevent a second attack, my doctor prescribed exercise, eating right, and therapy bare enteric aspirin. Enteric means it's safety coated to help protect your stomach, because it doesn't dissolve in your stomach. I asked my doctor if this regimen with therapy bare enteric would really make a difference down the road. That's why I'm doing it myself, he said. Therapy bare enteric aspirin. Take it from your doctor. Fanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Look out! Look at him go! Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. 14-10 remaining in regulation. 20 to 17. Saints. That drive lapping over into the fourth quarter. 10-49. They began at their 20. Barry Glanville, he said, we're like an NBA team. We just want the last shot at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, they make a lot of big plays, and teams that make big plays, like the Raiders, they make a lot of mistakes also. Tuggle offside, he's trying to block the field goal. And they ultimately wind up with the touchdown, but teams that make the big plays will also make the mistakes. They'll hurt themselves, but they keep coming back, and they'll be there at the end. I wouldn't kick this to Sanders. I wouldn't give him a chance. He doesn't get it, but he does on the lateral from Jordan. And he only gets it back to the 20-yard line. And Bobby April looks dismayed as it will begin from the 21. And we take a look at the numbers after three quarters when we return to the Superdome in New Orleans, where the Saints lead by three. The reinvention of the Ford Escort added a new level of design and performance to small cars. And now, we've added a new, more sophisticated Ford Escort. Introducing the new four-door Ford Escort LX Sedan. A car designed to offer exceptional value and quality, and even the power of the GT. But with a style all its own. Have you wanted a style all your own? Have you driven a Ford lately? At the end of Sanders' run back, there was an unsportsmanlike 
penalty assessed against New Orleans, a 15-yarder, and that means Atlanta gets it at the 36 instead of the 21. He never named a Saint. He didn't name the individual, but it's a 15-yard penalty against New Orleans. Yeah, and it wasn't involved uh, with Sanders himself. It wasn't a late hit or anything, so that's our way of saying we're in the dark about it. First and 10, Atlanta from the 36. And listen to this crowd. Miller finds the open man, that's Pritchard. Nice oh. move nice for move. the rookie from Colorado. He takes it across the 50 to the same 49-yard line, and we'll take a look at the numbers through the first three quarters of play. Time of possession, lopsided, of course, in favor of the Saints, but slowly and surely, Atlanta is creeping back into the picture in terms of yardage. But they are a big team play. This doesn't really reflect what they can do. They look for the big play. They have the one wide receiver alone that has 10 plays in Michael Haynes of over 40 yards. And we don't judge the Atlanta team by numbers. First down Falcons at the same 49. 13-15 to play in regulation. Saints up by three. Pegram to the 45-yard line. He is stopped by Swilling. We mentioned that the Saints are looking for their first ever postseason win in Atlanta's 26-year history. They have won one postseason game. They beat Philadelphia in 1978 in a game in which they trailed 13-0 in Steve Barkowski through two touchdown passes in the last five minutes, and Glanville was an assistant coach on that team. And Ricky Jackson has beseeched the crowd for noise, and you could actually see our sideline camera shaking these are not portable stands. This is a stationary building that's taken. Second and six. Miller throws. Low throw. Is it caught? Yes, it is. Somehow, some way, at least ruled on the field a catch by Floyd Dixon. It'll be two yards short of the first down at the 41-yard line. Floyd Dixon getting the single coverage and getting the coverage from the safeties. And yeah. getting less attention than Andre Risen and Michael Hayes, and consequently he has been been a target. Fast, Chris Miller. Fast in your seat belts, guys. <laughs> Just keep in mind, if you're Chris Miller, you look at a defense and you want to change the play. No way you can do it. That's the advantage of the home field here in Orlando. Third and two at the 41-yard line with Risen in motion. They try it on the ground. The rookie Pegram. Enough for a first down. He takes it to the 37-yard line. Stopped by Gene Atkins. I don't know that I've been in a football stadium for a lot of years where I've heard noise like I've heard the last two plays. Incredible. And right now they're catching the breath, and they'll be back in a moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, that I can see where that'll tire you out. Here they go. Bill Swalick is out of the game at right guard, and he's replaced by Mike Ruther. First down from the 37-yard line. Four-man rush. Miller going deep, looking for Haynes, but he throws it out of bounds, and Haynes was blanketed by Milton Mack. Never got free. Second down. Mack also getting help from the inside. Brett Maxey back there with it. Good coverage. Again, Chris Miller locked in on the speedy Michael Haynes as well he should. He's had been the big play man all year for them, and a little work there with the hand by Milton Mack. But Milton Mack knew he had help on the inside, so he was in pretty good shape. There's Fralick, who is shaken up, as we said. Ruther now in at right guard. Earlier, he spelled Jamie Duke at center. Second and ten. Here's Pegram, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Swilling and Warner there at the 39. Well, if you think the last couple of plays were noisy, wait till they, uh, wait till they strap on this third down and long situation. And 
A key play here for the Falcons. They need more yardage to get into field goal range. I think they're outside right now. They need another eight or ten yards. At least that. Yeah. For a viable option for the field goal yeah. with Norm Jackson. Third and 12 at the 39. Listen to this. They have to get to the 27 to convert. Miller throws, and he picks up the first down as the catch is made at the 20-yard line by George Thomas. A receiver who was hurt last week. Rehab came back, third-year man out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, makes a very big catch for a conversion. These very are ankle. They didn't know he was going to be able to go. These are slow-developing patterns, Frank. Again, it was all based on tremendous pass protection for Chris Miller, who went from the first to the second to the third guy. I mean, uh, the Miller, at Miller reading the right yeah. receiver. Now, he's in a little bit of, of a panic here as he moves in, steps into the pocket, pulls it down. And delivers that ball right on target to Thomas. Thomas, his first catch of the day. He was in because Haynes was out on the last play. And the throw here is incomplete, intended for Thomas. So Haynes is on the Atlanta sideline, their big play guy. And Thomas has come in in his stead. You really can't blame Thomas for not catching that ball. That's a ball he could have easily caught if he would have stepped out of bounds. He knew exactly where he was, tried to keep his feet inbounds, and the ball was just thrown too there's, far outside. There's Haynes there looking at him. And remember the touchdown pass he caught earlier? And he took the tremendous shot from Vincey Glenn. Well, he is, I think, still recovering from that. He was woozy after that play. He's been in and out of the lineup, and now they're looking at him again. And Chris Miller just starts wandering towards the Falcon sideline. It is, it's a timeout on the Saints. The Saints take the timeout here on second and 10 at the 20. 8.59 left in regulation. You may not have believed an American luxury sedan could challenge the world's best. The new Cadillac Seville STS. Winner of Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year and one of Car and Driver Magazine's 10 Best Cars in the World. The Cadillac Seville STS. There's never been a car so acclaimed it could change the way you think about American automobiles. Your biggest competitor is working on a proposal for the same job you're after. You want this to be enlarged? They have about the same idea as you do. Copy the slide. The only difference is... Let's print it. They own a Canon Color Laser copier, and you don't. Who would you give the job to? If you think you can't afford a Canon Color Laser copier, maybe you can't afford to be without one. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. Washington goes after the national crown when they meet Heisman winner Desmond Howard in Big Ten champ Michigan. It's the Rose Bowl New Year's Day on ABC Sports. Here's why the Saints had to take a timeout. Vincey Glenn will move out of the way and there is Mark Lee trying to get his shoe back on. He's trying to get the double knot out of it and with the cornerback situation on the Saints they were in no position to bring in somebody else so they had to take the timeout and of course they're all aware of the fact that Michael Haynes has re-entered the Atlanta lineup, their big play guy. Second and 10. Falcons at the 28-59 to play in regulation. New Orleans leads by three. Miller and Frank Warren gets him by the shirt and checks him at the 25. What a great play by Frank Warren. He just explodes off the ball. Right now you're looking at 
if there is an incomplete pass or no gain on this play, you're looking at about a 47-yard field goal. Take a look at Warren. Chris Hinton, the right tackle, is preoccupied with, Je uh, with Ricky Jackson. When Ricky Jackson loops back to the inside, Warren was already on his shoulder, and he couldn't do anything about it. Excellent by Warren. Third and 15 at the 25-yard line. Butchered in motion. Miller throws to the 18, and that's going to make it easier for Norm Johnson as the catch is made by Pritchard at about the 19-yard line. So that's going to set up about a 36-yard field goal attempt for Norm Johnson, who, as we mentioned, has been perfect this year from inside 45. That'll be one of those completions that when you look at it in comparison to all the others will be insignificant and just disappear. But ask Norm Johnson how important it is. 36 yards, he made a 44-yarder earlier. This to tie the game. And the, 20, crowd, 20. <laughs> and the crowd reaction tells you whether that was good or bad. Mm -hmm. And Mr. April on the sidelines congratulates everybody. An extremely effective drive by the Atlanta Falcons. They were trailing by three. They took it in bits and pieces, but it was all said and done. Hit it at up to three points in a tie game. When the time comes that you need a hand with life insurance, let your Allstate agent work it out on paper, starting with your house, and a policy to protect your mortgage. Of course, if your family's already filled out, your agent can help you fashion a plan for a college fund, or for retirement that promises nothing but smooth sailing. So let your Allstate agent be your agent for life. Allstate Life. Financial strength you can count on. You may not have believed an American luxury sedan could challenge the world's best. The new Cadillac Seville STS. Winner of Automobile Magazine's Automobile of the Year and one of Car and Driver Magazine's 10 Best Cars in the World. The Cadillac Seville STS. There's never been a car so acclaimed it could change the way you think about American automobiles. From the field to the stands, the fun of the World League returns in March on ABC Sports. The Superdome in New Orleans, where the score couldn't be closer. It's 20-20. And in terms of total yards, well, it's about as close as it gets because there's a difference of only two yards as the Falcons, uh, after their last scoring drive, results in a field goal tie of the game. The Saints have gained two more yards than the Falcons. Johnson's kick is downed after some hesitation by McAfee in the end zone. They'll take it at the 20-yard line. We have college football tomorrow. It is the Dogs and the Hogs. Georgia, Arkansas, Poland, Weed Eater, Independence Bowl tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern. Then... Triple header Wednesday, Cal Clemson in the Florida Citrus Bowl at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. The big game of the day, the Rose Bowl. It's a beauty, Washington against Michigan. Desmond Howard, of course, the Heisman Trophy winner for Michigan. And then we'll wrap it up with the Sugar Bowl from here at the Superdome as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish come in against the third-ranked Florida Gators. A lot of jambalaya between now and then. Mm -hmm. First down, Saints at the 20, 7.36 left in regulation. Takes to McAfee. Hebert has it tipped and incomplete. It was nearly caught after it was tipped by Turner. Case got a hand on it. Second down. Getting into an area of time remaining in this game where you could call it the Morton Anderson factor. He is a great kicker. He kicked one earlier in the year of 60 yards. 18 career 
field goals of over 50 yards, and as you can see, getting that hand up there is Scott Case. Boy, and more often than not, when a defensive back hits the ball like that and it goes up into the air, more often than not, it's either caught by a receiver or caught by a defensive back for an interception. That was very fortunate for the Saints that that dropped harmlessly. Second and 10 at the 20-yard line. Dawkins showed a seven-man front. Abert throws it over the middle of the tight end tight. And he has a first down. Gets to the 33-yard line. The old trapdoor got in track. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Good receiver. And as you pointed out earlier, they have not used their tight ends much today. Either Hobie Printer and Don Tice. He's the leading receiver at that tight end position. And you're right. He just caught the toe and the turf, and down he went. He could have got another six or seven yards out of that. That's where the players say that somebody opened a trap door and grabbed him <laughs> as he was running by because it wasn't anybody on the other team. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he sprawls for about five. Not a, uh, not a player's favorite moment. First down at the 33. Wainwright in motion out of a three tight end set. Oh, McAfee fumbles. Atlanta has it. And Robert Lyles recovers, and as stated before, McAfee with a fumble in the regular season game that led to New Orleans losing that one here in the Superdome to the Saints. Oh, and you it, hate to lay oh. deja vu on you from New Orleans, but we talked about it earlier. He had a critical fumble in the overtime loss five weeks ago to Atlanta, and he coughs it up again right here. What a major play by the Illinois rookie, Mo, Mo Gardner. Boy, he just goes right around the center and gets in there and creates that fumble. Boy, this is just a big-time play by a rookie. He gets that carrying left. that so loosely. We can see that again. There's no way you should be carrying that football as loose as he was carrying it as he was turning back into the line of scrimmage. He just had it, had it by the hand. He didn't have it tucked away at all and came out easily when Mo Gardner got that hand in there. First and ten at the 30-yard line. 635 left in regulation. Miller fires over the middle. It's incomplete through a bullet intended for Pritchard at the 20-yard line. Second down. I think in all honesty, Chris Miller just drilled that into the carpet. He wants to protect it down here. Jerry Glanville showing a lot of confidence in Miller and his ability to keep from turning over the football. He knows the coverage is there. He just drills it into the carpet. It is second down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Big load now put on the New Orleans defense. Miller fires to the outside. It's a minimal gain as Risen makes the catch at the 30-yard line. Gene Atkins, who picked off three passes last week against Phoenix and had a fourth nullified on an interception, provided the coverage. There's a completion for absolutely nothing. There's Hammer, a devoted Saints uh, Falcons fan, rather, who... His song, Too Legit to Quit, has been adopted by the Falcons, and certainly they are portraying that type of uh, mental attitude here this afternoon. Oh, they are quitting. What a big play on both sides of the football. And Chris Miller realizes how big it is. All timeout. What to think about it? We have 6-18 left in regulation. Atlanta 20, New Orleans 20. about style. It's about power. It's about control, the security of standard anti-lock brakes. It's about $12,000. The all-new Grand Am Sports Sedan. Excitement with purpose. When you're all stuffed up and use an ordinary nasal spray, it drips into your tissue where it can't help you breathe. But not Sinex Ultra Fine Mist. Its medicine stays where you need it, so you can breathe the way you want to. We don't drip down, we clear up. 
A recent Department of Energy study reveals that most American homes are under-insulated. And that means you. To find out what's right for your home, call Owens Corning at 1-800-GET-PINK. Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. When what you eat and drink upsets your stomach, you want a medicine that works directly on your stomach. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, Pepto delivers powerful medicine right where you hurt. Pepto-Bismol. 6-18 left in regulation, the game tie 2020. The Falcons have the ball at the Saints 29-yard line, third and nine. As we look ahead, each team has two timeouts remaining. Norm Johnson, as we pointed out, the field goal kicker has not missed from 45 yards in. The question to Jerry Glanville, who says we live on the edge, does he try to pick up the first down, put more points on the board? Because if he puts three up there, he still leaves a lot of time for New Orleans. Well, he comes up in the red gun, the four receiver set. Miller gets down, fumbles the ball. It's a scramble at the 37-yard line. Ken might have got it back. No signal yet. Well, Ricky Jackson started all of this, no matter how it ends up. Ricky Jackson, again, takes matters into his own hands, and you see the signal fourth down. They're indicating that it's Atlanta's ball at the 37 and probably at a field goal range. I think Ricky Jackson may not go to the Pro Bowl, but he could run for governor down here. Oh, well, he really could. And you know what? Some players in big games disappear. Some players in big games just take it into their own hands. And Ricky Jackson is one of those players. Watch him come from the corner. He's going to get around Hinton. Hinton was oh. slow coming off the ball. And it was fortunate that Atlanta covered the ball, but this is going to be a major kick here for the Falcons. What is this, 54 yards? 54 yards if Johnson goes through with it. It would match his career long. Scott Fulhag to hold. Well, if you're going to try a long field goal, this is the place. Not even close. Deflected. Somebody better cover it. Still well, loose. Well, uh, covered at the 19-yard line. The Saints could have, without a, any chance at all, picked that ball up and taken off with it. That, that's about the best thing that can happen to you if your kick gets deflected. I mean, that's a lot better than a true miss because the true miss comes back to the original line of scrimmage. It was deflected by Les Miller, number 69. Miller goes 6-7, and he is the key man for the special teams when they try to block the kick. Rowe and company are going to go over exactly where this ball should be spotted. Well, the key for the Falcons was that it crossed the line of scrimmage. Once it went beyond the line of scrimmage, it's very much like a punt. <laughs> We have a missed field goal, back to the line of scrimmage, first down. Well, it doesn't matter then that it was deflected. A missed field goal is the same as a, a completely missed conversion instead of a hit attempt here. Absolutely right. In that sense, it does come back to the line of scrimmage. If it remains behind the line of scrimmage, one of the Falcons could have picked it up and run with it. But the key is in a high ball game, and you, as you look at 69, Les Miller block it. But again, he's 6'7". It's seven. no point. It's no point for the Falcons. And not a lot of time left. And it's a ball control offense now of the Saints that takes over. A lot of time remaining, 544. And you just don't want to get too conservative. And in the past, that's been one of the criticisms of New Orleans and Jim Moore that they get a lead, they set on it, and they get hurt that way. This is a confusing play. The, the officials are talking about exactly what the rule is here on a deflected field goal attempt. Maybe somebody upstairs is thumbing through the pages. Yeah, it's... Play called on the field is correct. First down. Two mm -hmm. first 
touched it is the uh, is the key. was the sack by Ricky Jackson. And so McAfee's fumble was not hurt. And the genetic situation that made Les Miller 6-7. First down from the 37-yard line. Hebert's pass is incomplete, but there is a flag. Early was looking for the flag, and the flag came late, but it came. They got to early, early. just a little early that time ordinarily he is perfect with his arrival this time he just gets in and moves in on Quinn early a little early you'll see it right here the thing about it though it, it's really only about a seven yard penalty it was first down anyway so hardly a disaster for the Falcons if that had been a third down play or something like that that it would be something you could say really turned the tide, but in the big scheme of things, not all that relevant. First down at the 44. They have Hilliard in the game in the backfield with Jordan. 540 to go in regulation. Hilliard in motion. Hey there on first down, hit Hilliard, and he in turn is hit by Jordan. After a short gain, he's up to the 45. It'll be second down and eight. Again, you, you're a New Orleans Saint. You're thinking ball control, hold on to the football, think of the clock, and remember that you have one of the game's great kickers sitting on the bench, Morton Anderson. Here's Hilliard, he's in there for McAfee. We may not see McAfee again. McAfee fumbling the football that could have been very decisive in this game. This one a beauty. If Atlanta wins, they go to Washington. If New Orleans wins, they go to Detroit. Loser goes home. 20-20. 455 to play in regulation. Hebert on second and eight. Lost one. Nobody is there. Martin, I believe the intended receiver, but he had broken the pattern off considerably short of where Hebert uh, threw the ball. Say, you they saw Bobby Hebert saying well, he was supposed to take it out. He was supposed to take it out. They call that a slight adjustment. <laughs> Eric Martin read one coverage. Bobby Hebert, needless to say, read the other coverage. Hebert expecting Martin to continue <laughs> downfield, and I'm suspecting that Bobby Aber is right. Quinn Early and Eric Martin were not supposed to be side by side out on the field. Had a look at Anderson. He had a 60-yarder earlier against the Bears. Third down and nine from the 45-yard line. Four-man rush over the middle. Martin has it dislodged. It is incomplete. Hit as the ball got there by Tracy Eaton. Timed it up perfectly. I mean, absolutely perfectly. If he doesn't make that hit, the New Orleans Saints are in field goal range. Tracy Eaton, a plan B player from the Cardinals, just putting the major league pop on Eric Martin. And I don't know. I haven't followed Eaton's career and seen every game, but I doubt he's made any bigger than that. Tommy Barnhart to punt. The dangerous Deion Sanders back at the 16-yard line. Ooh. Good deep kick. A little too deep. Not by much. Take it to the 20. Let me duck in something. The Chicago Tribune is reporting that Bill Parcells has agreed to take over as the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's gonna bring Jerry Venisi with him to become the general manager. That is what the Chicago Tribune is reporting, unconfirmed. Well, there's certainly been no doubt that Hugh Culverhouse and his family have been lusting after Bill Parcells for quite some time. Richard Williamson just got fired yesterday, and so uh, the timing was certainly there, and. I guess it was a question of money and a question of control and a question of whether or not Bill Parcells wanted to remain at NBC. But again, it's not official yet. It's being reported by the Chicago Tribune. Mm -hmm. First it down. is official. You can bet there are big zeros involved. First down of the 20-yard line for the Atlanta Falcons. Pegram 
gets five up to the 25, and as the clock winds down, again, each team has two timeouts left. And I guess if you analyze, you have to say that Bill Parcells, the one thing he has wanted was control. The one thing he lacked, even though he was fond of the organization in New York, was the control with George Young, a fine football man. Many people think as good as there is in the game, he nevertheless had the personnel control. And Bill Parcells, if he moves on, is going to be the major man. Second down and five at the 25-yard line. Clock down to 345. Miller, and it's incomplete up at the 29-yard line. That's Michael Haynes, who they're telling us uh, from the Falcon bench was hurt originally on the very first series of the game, and he's been in and out, and of course, he had a big day. And earlier when he caught the touchdown pass, he took a tremendous shot from Vincey Glenn, and they worked on him on the bench, so whatever he hurt early in the game, he certainly aggravated on that. Third and five at the 25-yard line, 341 remaining. from the left side as Miller looks that way. Miller throws, first down. Andre Risen run out by Gene Atkins up at the 37 with 3.35 to go. A pattern run an awful lot by the Falcons today where three receivers to one side, two of them head downfield, and then a the possession pattern run by the inside slot receiver. That's Risen right there. The area cleared out by his two men going downfield. Atkins has to cover a lot of distance to get over there. A very safe throw, and it's a pass that nine out of ten times is going to be open. Jim Mora with a nervous look up at the clock. Well, we talked about Morton Anderson. Don't forget Norm Johnson. He is no bum. Tremendous year, and it could come down to a Johnson kick. Jamie Duke waving to all his friends out there. Pegram struggles. Close to the 39-yard line, gain of what's called it one. It'll be second down and nine. You know, Dan talked earlier about the Atlanta Falcons playing mostly the regional telecast in the course of the season, but this is a pretty good football team. They have a lot of talent. We talked about the 11 number one draft picks that are active here tonight out of 13 that they had going into the season. But they also really helped themselves when they made the trade a year ago. They gave up the first pick in the draft, and they got Andre Rise, and they got Chris Hinton, and they got Indianapolis number one draft pick. Major strides with that trade. Second down and nine at the 39-yard line. Blitz. Haynes makes the catch. Haynes into same territory. Uh, Michael Haynes, who was born and raised in New Orleans, has just scored a touchdown that may have taken the Saints out of the playoffs. We talked about his 4-2-9 speed, and you saw it. He is a blazer. Michael Haynes, who killed them in the regular season game here. He was the key man in setting up their win. Hammer exults on the sideline, but still 2.41 to go in the suddenly silent Superdome, and you can see the effect of that injury to Haynes as he goes off the field. And Mil he gets Milton Mack. He just left him there. Yeah, he sure did. Milton Mack right now looking for a place to hide. And, of course, Milton Mack, one of those backup cornerbacks replacing the two injured cornerbacks, Troy Cook and Vince Buck. Johnson for the point after. Haynes today has caught six for 145 yards. He beats Mack here. This one good for 61 yards. Mack looks a little indecisive after Haynes catches the ball. He doesn't know quite whether to attack him. And when he chose not to attack, it gave Michael Haynes the room to make a move back to the inside. He easily went around Mack. And then nobody on the Saints defense has enough speed to catch him. When you're a cornerback, Frank, and the guy catches the ball in front of you, you can't sit on your haunches and wait for him to come to you. You have to be the aggressor. You know, again, they do on regional television more often than not and that is the seventh game out of eight games that he's caught touchdown passes it's his 12th play i believe a 40 or more yards he's had touchdown catches of 75 and 80. Uh, he's just a remarkable receiver and again it'll tell you how important speed is in this game 
It was second and nine on that play from the 39-yard line. What did Glanville tell us yesterday we talked about a while ago? There will be a couple times during this game where we will appear to be out of it. Mm -hmm. And they were. And they <laughs> just keep coming back, coming back. And here they have a seven-point lead with 2.41 left. Courageous effort on the part of Michael Haynes. A very sore shoulder. We didn't know whether he would be back earlier. They worked on him and worked on him. And he made the big play. And he made maybe the biggest play of their season because he's the guy who caught the Hail Mary against San Francisco. That was certainly the biggest play of the 49er season, as it turned out. Johnson kicks it to the four. McAfee. Brings it back to the 17, and the situation now with 2.32 left is two timeouts remaining for New Orleans, plus one at the two-minute warning as McAfee is slow in getting up. And pushing, shoving, talking, all starting to take place down on the field, but what's needed by the 11 guys in the black jerseys now is concentration and execution. Lots of time, crunch time. They have the two-minute warning to work with, they have the two timeouts, and they have a quarterback that can get it done in Bobby Abair. The question here is defensively, are the Falcons going to gamble and come with the blitz or sit back and play a softer zone? <laughs> Only a three-man front this time. Carroll comes to the left side. Atlanta rushes three, and Abair throws to Quinn early. He makes the catch. He's up to the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and three. No huddle. 2-13, 2-12, and counting down. It's second and three. Oh, yeah. Flag down. Over the middle. This will come back. Turner. He gets to the 40. That won't count, guys. That was motion against the Saints. Against Eric Martin. Yeah. You saw him bend his knees and act like he was going to take off early. This is going to go against the Saints. It'll make it second and eight back at the 19. Here is Eric Martin right here. Watch his Illegal knees. motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Yep. There Three it was. And the flag comes right out. That is... A good call, and the receivers just have to look at the ball. They can't lose their concentration like that, and that, that is just a, a colossal penalty against the Saints. They were moving their way upfield, and now they really have got a long way to go. They're clear back inside the 20. Second and eight at the 19. Again, 2.03 left. The clock will stop at the end of this play for the two-minute warning, and the Saints will have two timeouts remaining and 81 yards to negotiate. A bear going deep and incomplete, intended for Wesley Carroll, and he was covered by Deion Sanders, and it will be third down and eight as we have come to the two-minute warning. Officially at 1.57. And again, the Falcons that far away from advancing to the next round of the playoffs. Again, good coverage by Sanders. No place for Aaron there to put it. Hey, sports fans, get a ticket to Bud Bowl 4, and you could win a million dollars cash. A million bucks? But you can't get that ticket just anywhere. Bud Bowl tickets? Huh? Bud Bowl tickets. Sorry. Bud Bowl tickets? Bud Bowl. Bud Bowl. Tickets. Your ticket where you buy Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft Beer. And you just might be a winner. Hey guys, is this the line for... You know, it's not that important. Never mind. Bud Bowl 4. This time it's for a million bucks. It has a breathtaking shape. It has new overhead cam power and standard anti-lock brakes. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Grand Am. Excitement with purpose. 157 left, third down and eight. 
The Superdome in New Orleans, which has been mostly noisy, is now very quiet. Atlanta on top, 27 to 20. The Saints have two timeouts remaining. They have the ball at their own 19-yard line. And that down and distance become important, too. They have to convert. It's third down and eight. They clearly would go for it on fourth down. It would uh, behoove them to pick up the first here. Yes, it would behoove <laughs> them. And they don't have to do it with a 35-yard pass, either. And Key Atlanta is out there with their prevents with six defensive backs. And so frequently, the Saints have Look to number 84, Eric Martin, their leading receiver. He works well underneath in a crossing pattern. Runs well with the ball when he catches it. They just can't lose sight of the fact that eight yards is what they need. Third and eight from the 19.
complemented by just a perfect 100 catch by Eric Martin. I mean, look at the quality of the throw, look at the quality of the catch, and then the quality of the brain work that gets Martin over to the sidelines with an assist from Scott Case throwing him out of bounds. Okay, that's a hard yeah. pass to throw. He's coming directly across yeah. the field, and it was perfect. That's why both these teams are in the playoff. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Let's One to, of 10 remaining. Let's move this game to the airport. A bear throws, and it's picked off at the 30-yard line by Tim McHire. And McHire's going to gamble by flipping it to Sanders. They should just fall down. That's not very smart. No, but they live on the edge, and they keep living on the edge. And they're going to go to the playoffs on the edge. Are they for real? This is Joe Fink back for a touchdown. Well, on two of the on two of the stupidest plays I have seen on a long time. I don't mean to be critical, he but all you got to do is fall on the ball and the game is over. They take two chances like that and end up scoring a touchdown. Amazing. Glanville loves that. There will be no criticism of what they did by Glanville. But that's not smart, guys. That's not smart. But the Falcons. The Falcons win the ball game. Maybe and that's why they're here, too. Hey, you know what? Maybe it is. That last lateral <laughs> looked to me as if it might have been a forward lateral. Take a look at it again. It was certainly close to it. McHire picks it off. Remember, he did this two weeks ago in Seattle. He lateral to Deion Sanders. Sanders took it in for a touchdown. Now, that definitely is a lateral. Here's Sanders. Again, great speed. But all you got to do is fall down. The game's yeah. over. Oh, I know, but they don't think that way. And it comes right down from the top, Jerry Glanville. Now let's take a look and see this, if this could have been a forward lateral. It's real close. Watch his feet. Where are his feet going to be? That's not bad running, though, is it? He's, He's on the, outside the 40. Uh, that appears to be a forward lateral. That's a forward lateral. They could bring it back. It is a reviewable play. It really doesn't matter, though. The only thing that would matter no. would be the final score. No. They can run the clock out, even if they bring it back. I think it's a wild play well, to determine this football game. I don't think there's any doubt that this was a forward lateral. Dion was at the 40 or behind it when he had the ball leave his hand. <laughs> well, it, it ends with a footnote. The key thing here is that the Atlanta Falcons are going to win the game. They are going to Washington. The Saints still have not won a postseason game. This guy is thought by many to be crazy. Not her, but Jerry Glanville, the man we just uh, dissolved away from and now back to. But here's a guy, and coaches come in all shapes and sizes and forms. There are the Knowles and the Shulers and the Landrys and the Parcells and the Walters and the rest. Review, we've got an illegal forward pass, <laughs> which is a five-yard penalty on the receiving team. But the fact of the matter is Glanville has now taken his team to the playoffs in four of the last five seasons. He's a winner. You know, Al, they played Washington early in the year, and they got beat 56 to 17. Well, and, and one thing here, the guy we got to give credit to, because we kind of got caught up in everything that happened, uh, when the big play had to be made, uh, there was Tim McHire. Tim McHire, as he's been doing all year, has come up with big play after big play. He talks the big game, and most of the time he plays the big game. And uh, that time, Bobby Hebert really threw the ball right to McHire, but he didn't <laughs> drop it. Again, to quote Landville, and we said it at the very beginning, and our theme has been they play on the edge. And Jerry said yesterday, we make people nervous, including themselves. <laughs> well, I think including their front office and their fans on a play like the last one. It's almost a certainty, I think, that we will be in Atlanta next year. It's hard for me to imagine them not being a part of the old Monday night effort next year. Saints can stop the clock once more, and they have just done it. And now, just one more play, and barring a uh, Pasarczyk Herman Edwards scenario, this one is over, and the Falcons go to Washington. Of course, Dan Al was already checking out the hotel registry there in Atlanta. I got it booked. You got it booked, Art. You know, this is our final uh, pro game of the season, and as Jerry Glanville congratulates uh, all his Falcon players, uh, I just want to say, uh, no offense to our friends at NBC, CBS, and ESPN, uh, we finish up another professional season working with the best technical crew in professional football, the best camera, tape, tech people downstairs. Uh, guys, thank you very much. You're the best. Mm -hmm. Guys and girls. What a fun year it's been. It's been a great year. Yeah. We've had some super games, some incredible finishes. We've had some blowouts that all go with this game, but what a wild one to wind up our 1990 season. Only one season. 
Uh, and on a kneel down, this one is over. So the Saints season is over. New Orleans wins the West, but they go home or they stay home as it is after another postseason defeat. Yeah, and Barry right. Landville continues on with the wild card Atlanta Falcons. What a disappointment for New Orleans. They started back in July, and now it's all over. Falcons win at 27. 20, let's go to Tim Brandt. Tim. All right, I'm with Coach Glanville right now. Jerry, you said you live on the edge. You play on the edge. Boy, you guys did that. Well, it was great. Uh, Michael Haynes had the fastest touchdown I've ever seen. He just did a great job. He deserves all the credit. Go interview Mike Haynes. He was fantastic. All right, congratulations. Good luck in Washington. Great Saints team. Uh, uh, I got to love their fans. They got the best fans I've ever seen in, in a closed stadium. Next year, we hope to have that same advantage. All right, Jerry. <laughs> Back upstairs uh, to you guys. I'm going to try to grab Mike Haynes. All right, there he is, Michael Haynes, and what a day for him. Not only uh, one of the big heroes for the Falcons, but to do it in his hometown as Mike Ken advances to the playoffs. And what a, what, I wanted to, what a great game by Mike Ken, who really just made Pat Swilling disappear. Terry mm -hmm. Glanville was referring to the fact the Falcons will be playing in a dome stadium next year. Atlanta's getting it all. They had the Braves in the World Series. They're getting a new dome stadium. They've got the Summer Olympics coming up in 96. Uh, the city in the middle of Georgia is on quite a roll, and they've got themselves a pretty doggone good football team. Hey, well, we talked about Mike Haynes. He played uh, in the band when he was in high school here, and he played the beat he the band today. Kenny. Here he is with Tim. Well, there he was with Tim. He's on his way to the locker room. As the Atlanta Falcons, who came in as a six-point underdog, come into New Orleans and not be... Saints out of the playoffs, 27 to 20. A 61-yard pass from Miller to Haynes. This was the final the play. Abear tried to take it to the sidelines, I guess, to prevent defense. And already McIver is looking for Sanders, and he finally picks him out. And then it's the old rugby game. <laughs> and the forward lateral. They're good television. You gotta say that. <laughs> yep. Too legit to quit. A look into the very happy Atlanta Falcon locker room. And they're very happy because of this play with a little bit more than two minutes remaining. 61-yard touchdown pass to Michael Haynes. Sends the Falcons to Washington next week. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, the Georgia Bulldogs head to Louisiana to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. It's the Poland Wheel.